Hello, my friends. This is Bobby D coming to you live from the Lombard Civil Philippines. I'm having an awesome time in the Philippines today. Hope you are as well, wherever you're from. Hey, today, I'm going to talk to you about Filipino makes sports illustrated history. Mixed. In the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, man. Filipino makes sports illustrated history. Mixed. In the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! What a joy! Such a joy that you come back again, my friend. And today I'm gonna say, though here for the first time, you click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon to continue to see the fresh, new Philippine videos, motivation videos, and the worldwide videos. Now, when you talk about the Philippines, you know what I'm saying? This is a very small country, mm -hmm. as it relates to other countries, uh, 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 number one countries in the world. This is a small country. And whenever they have success in the world, they like to celebrate. And they like the big knowledge. And there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? It's okay, man. Small country, and they have somebody that represents them around the world. You're the painter, man. She made history. She made history historical. It was a historical day on the 16th of March for the fifth paints. Yeah. Young lady may had a May have a claim to fame, and she roused up and hit the Sports Illustrated uh, uh, copy. Man, she was the cup illustrator model. Man, she made it. So we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna show you uh, how this lady did it, and, and we're gonna look at her background, and, and then we're gonna find out some things about her. And I believe you—you you might be surprised when we when we go into look at this in detail. You gonna say, "What she did that? And how she do that?" And you could be you gonna be you gonna be pleasantly surprised. So we're gonna show you some things about her, and and uh, then we're gonna we're gonna come to a conclusion about some things at the end of this program. Are you with me, JP? So good to see you today. I'm always happy when somebody shows up. I got a few people here today, and I said, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I always like to thank the Lord. You know how I do, man. The Most High God. That's why I am here. He gives me life. He gives me strength. He gives me hope. He gives me peace. And I like to be in the mix. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's go. Okay. So we want first of all, you know how we do, man. You know how you know how we do. <laughs> we do a one minute review. And that's all for you. And that rhyme. Because you know I'm the rhyme master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of disaster. No, nah, <laughs> big blaster, baby. Let's go. Big blaster getting ready to go. We're gonna find out what we did. We talked about last time y'all were not here, man. You know, you missed it. So, you know. It's your thing, your thing. You don't want, you don't want to keep up Bob D. It's okay, man. You just check the replay, okay? <laughs> I, I ain't mad at you, man. I know you got stuff to do. You're a grown man. You're a grown woman. I know you got to take care of business. You need to handle your business, man, because I'm going to do mine. I'm going to handle mine because I'm handling mine right now. I'm a responsible person. And when I'm supposed to do something, I, I'm do, I, <laughs> I do everything I can to get it done. And when I don't, you don't see me do what I've said I want to do, something happens. And I can't, I can't, I can't predict me something. I, I know when everything happened in my life, guess what? God's number one. Okay. My family number two. Okay. And then Bobby D number three. Okay. And then you guys and everything else I have to do is number four. Okay. We get ready to go out the door. Okay, you with me, JB? And that's the way you should be the same way. Whenever something happens, man, you put God for prayer. Put your family in next, and then you put your, and then you take right on prioritize right on down the line, and things will work out better for you when you have a, a, a line of succession, a line of priority, okay? chain of command, if you will. Military people out there, chain, you know what the chain of command is, right? From the top to the bottom and in between, chain, man. And when everything, when any one of those links in the chain break, the whole it breaks up the whole cycle. You know? Everything go out of whack, you know. And that's what happened when when, when uh. The commit the old. I ain't talking about the current commander in chief. The man, the commander in chief, was in office. He all the change just got all cracked up, <laughs> and then wasn't nothing going right for us. Now we we got a strong, solid chain of command, and we doing all right. Okay, you with me, JB? Some of y'all got that stimulus money. I know you got that stimulus money out there. You running crazy, getting a little lazy, don't want to go to work, think you, you done missed the big stuff, you got the big head. I got me some monster right now. I don't have to go to a job. You know, I got this monster right now. I'm going to take me two weeks off. <laughs> don't do it. Listen to me. Don't get your butt to work, man. 
Okay, just because you got some extra money in your pocket, don't mean you act a fool up in here because you will get your job, you will get yourself straight up fired. You hear me? Okay, don't play with them people like that, man. You know, when you get on these people's job, you better be right, tight, long, and straight, or you won't have a job long. You hear me, man? Listen to me. I know that. I know what I'm talking I've been there, done that. And I, I ain't acting crazy no more. I learned my lesson. Y'all better learn this thing. Let's go. All right. One minute review. One minute review. One minute review. Who we got? Let's go. What did we talk about yesterday? Hmm? Huh? How many of you remember what we talked about yesterday? I'm going to show you, man. But you know you don't remember nothing, man. We talked about this right here, man. We talked about this right here. You know, three tips. We talked about some tips, man, on how to have a strong, healthy habit relationship in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And we gave you the ABCs. We talked about acknowledging. We talked about be, be, be more open. We talked about uh, committing yourself. And those three things right there will help you in any endeavor in your life to help your relationship become long and strong, right and tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Strong relationship. And, and, and whenever you find a weak link in your relationship, you take care of that link. You straighten it out. You mend it. You reform it. You uh, uh, you uh, make it stronger. You get another bond. You get another, and you make your relationship strong. And you continue to keep it strong by communicating, coming together when things are messed up, and praying about it, and going after the devil in your life and in your relationship. Because when you when you boil it boil it all down, whatever comes in your life, whenever you I told you the other night, I told you last night, whenever you go to a new level. You always got what? New devils. Okay. You try as soon as you get your relationship, you get your lady, and you all right with her. Next thing you know, you got a devil in your relationship causing some craziness. Saying some other man coming to get your woman. So some of the woman trying to get you. All kind of stuff come at you, man. As soon as you take your level and your relationship to another level, guess what? Here come the devils. Here come the devils. Everybody know that. Here come the devils. <laughs> and they come. But hey, when you're ready for it, man. You can kick them butts out the door. So look at what you mean, devil. Look at devil. You, you, you better step back, Jack, because you ain't got nothing here. You know, you can talk with strength when you are connected to the man up above. You can talk with power when you're connected up above. You can talk with peace, passion, and everything, and you can command him to free. Okay? But you have to have that spiritual connection. Okay? Let's go. All right. So that's what we talked about, man. And today, uh, thumbnail for the day, thumbnail for the day, thumbnail for the day. We're going to talk about this right here. Okay, look at Filipina. Come right there. Filipina, man. Lovely lady. She made the cover of Sports Illustrated, man. First time. Uh, Filipina. And she's a gorgeous young lady. Gorgeous young lady. And we're going to find out some things about her. And uh, we're going to go through these things so you'll know. I mean, I always like to, I, I always find it amazing. When Filipinas make the map, they hit the map with some good things, you know. You know, always see, we always look in the news and find bad things, you know, and we want to highlight the bad. But this is a good thing, man. You know, it's a really a good thing. It's a good story. It's a positive story. And uh, it has some um, some very striking, um, uh, I guess, coincidences as we look at it at the end. And you'll find out what I'm talking about as we get to that. I don't want to let everything out at, up front. I want to say it. Save the best for last. You with me, JP? We're talking about some Filipina today, y'all. Filipina in the house and doing the right time, long and strong. They got their act together, and she had some trials. We find out in the beginning of her life, but she straightened it up. You know, that's what we do, man. Whenever it's not, it's not about how you start off in life. It's not about where you came from. And some of us came from the worst possible scenarios. Yeah. You, you, your mother had you out of wedlock. She was raped, and you was you was the one. Okay, worst possible scenarios. You had no father. It was just you and your mom. Okay, and then you had four or five kids. Now you you had to be their dad. Okay, because they and you know they had, you had to be the man. You know, and so worst possible scenarios we came from, but we many of us have risen above that. And all you got to do is get your mind right. Hmm? Because your mind is a terrible thing to waste. You, you get your head right, strapped on straight, tight, long, and strong, ain't nothing to hold you back, man. Listen to me. I've had some trials in my life, too. Nothing like I just talked about, though. But I hear all that. I hear none of that. But I had, you know, I had things that affected me, just like you did. But, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not what happens to you that counts. It's how you deal with it. Like brother, the late great brother James Bowser, you see, he said, how you deal with it? Uh, who? You got to deal with it. Uh, 
And when you deal with it right, tight, long and strong, you can move forward in your life. Nothing can hold you back but you. Okay? If you let it, you, you hold yourself back. But when you your mind is focused like a laser beam, like Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee said, have laser-like focus. When your mind is focused, man, nothing can stop you but you. Focus. No hocus pocus. Just focus. All right, let's go. So we're going to talk about this later today. No hocus pocus, just focus, focus. <laughs> I just said it. All right, let's go. Focus for the day. Focus for the day. Focus for the day. Today, let's go. See this lady right there? Beautiful, gorgeous lady, man. She's a model. She's, and I'm, I'm not going to give it to you front. She's a beautiful lady right there. And her name is Le Lena Bloom. And I let, I'm sorry, y'all. I made a mistake on her name. I just said it. <laughs> That's supposed to be B L O O M. I'm sorry. It's not boom, y'all. <laughs> Later, boom. I love me. I love my mind. <laughs> I'm here to cry. No, but it's bloom, y'all. B L O O M. Okay? Remember that. But she's a nice, beautiful young lady, uh, beautiful complexion. And she is, um, oh, look at who is this Filipina? She's a Filipina, y'all. I know she's dark, but she's a Filipina. You know, she's a Morena. You know, oh, number two, why is she so special? We're going to find that out. Inquiring minds got to do. I wanted to know when I saw I said, I got to know what she's talking about. Where's she from? What's her background? Who's she about? What's she so special? What's so special about her? I needed to know that. And I found that out. And we're going to take a look at that today. And number three, we're going to address an elephant. You know, there's a big, fat, huge, large elephant in the room. And we're going to find out why that elephant's in the room. Aren't you curious about the elephant in the room? Hmm? I'm going to show you what that elephant is. And we're going to talk about that elephant until we get that elephant out the room. Kai, you with me, JB? Are you with me, man? Come on now. Yeah, hey, look here, man. I know you had a long day. You, uh, you, you, you just got through looking at your favorite program. Or I interrupted your favorite program. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. But, you know, I need to get this out. And I need you to see this because I need to inform you. I need to inform you. I need to educate you. I need to inspire you. And sometimes I do it in what? In entertaining fashion. So that's my thing, man. You know, and that's why you tuned in tonight, right? Wait, I know you did, man. You want to get this down. I bring it, man. Let's go. So number one is what? Who was number one? Who remember number one? I got to show y'all. Look at y'all face on there. Number one, who is the Philippine, man? Who is this lady? Who is that lady? Remember that song? Who is that lady? Sweet, sexy lady. I was brother, man. You don't remember? Hey, man, you don't know nothing about that. You less than 25. You don't know nothing about that. Shut your mouth. You don't know about that. But if you over 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, you know. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go. Um, so number one is what? Who is this lady, man? Who is this Filipina? She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's everything I wanted and more in a Filipina. And I, 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 I need to know what she's, what's going on with her and what she's all about. We're going to find that out. Number one is what? Who is this Filipina? Her name is Lena, Lena Bloom. And I told you, it's not Boom, y'all. Okay? She's 27 years old. But we're going to find out everything. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about her and why she's so special. Let's go. Number one is what? Focus. Number one focus. What? Who is this Philippine? That's her right there. Beautiful, man. Look at her. Look at that. She, she got that Filipino nose. She got that Filipino eyes, Filipino lips. And she, she's dark chocolate. Okay? But she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Okay? And we're going to, now she's 27 years old. Okay? Right? She comes from Chicago, Illinois. She, uh, she's an African-American, guys. That's one thing we discovered. She's what? African American. That means she's black. She, she was raised in America. She's an American citizen. Okay. And then she's what's called a Philam. Okay. Filipino American. She's a Philam. That's what they use. They call it Philam for short. But those Americans that have a Filipino uh, ethnic ec, 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 oh, I can't remember. They have an ec, they have a racial background. <laughs> they have a racial background that's part Filipina and part American or part African American. Right? And that's what she is. And a lot of people like to call them zebra type people. I ain't, I ain't gonna do that, man. You know, I, don't, I don't call no people like their name, man. She's a beautiful woman. She's just a mixed race. That's why I put mixed on my title. Okay? You got me, man. You know, hey, I do everything for a reason. For a She's an actress. She's a model. She's a dancer. And uh, gorgeous, just gorgeous all around person. And as, as sweet as she can be. Lee Ona. Lay on a bloom. That's her name. Okay. And so that's what she that's who she is. Okay. She's 27 years old. Lovely, gorgeous person. She made history 
because she's a Filipina that's done something that no Filipina's done before. Hit the cover of Sports Illustrated. She's a model, beautiful model, man. She's tall. Uh, she's got all the attributes to have that most good models need. She's got a beautiful face, beautiful features, long, lovely, flowing hair. She uh she's slender and she's tall. She's five feet, she's five feet nine. Uh, I'd be nice about five to ten, but she's tall, man. And so that's what a good, those are the things that a good model needs to have going for. She got it going on. Okay, let's go. I'm right, gonna find out some other things. Number two is what? Move number two. Number two is why is she so special? Why? Bob, you told me she was special. I, I don't see nothing special about her, Bob. She black. That's all I see. She got some kinky hair. That she, <laughs> oh, well, chill, man. No, hey. Slow your roll, man. I told you I was gonna break it down to you tight, right along. Give me, a, can you give me a chance, please? Please, man. Please, sir. Let's go. I will show you. Man. Number two with what? Number two. With what? Why is she so special? Why is she so special? Why? Why? We just found out who she is. Now we're gonna find out why she's so special. Why? Why, Bobby? Here we go. Number number two. This is why, man. See that? That was Lena. See that picture in the background, the little boy? That was Lena, man. Yeah, that was her when she was a kid. Yeah, that's her. She was a boy. Uh huh. She's a half. She's a half Filipino, half Filipino, uh, American, black American, and that's her dad right there under her arm. That's her on the right, the lady with the hat on. That's her when she grown, and that's her dad. Dad is a black man, and she was a little boy years ago when she was born into this world, and and she went in and when she became of her of age, she said, "You know what, Dad?" She said, "I'm tired." She said, I'm tired, daddy. I'm tired of being a boy. I'm supposed to be a woman. And I want to be a, I want to be a woman, daddy. And she said, he daddy said, look here. You was a boy all your life. Now you trying to change. What's your problem? <laughs> and they went, you know how they do. Fathers and children, and children, they go through this stuff and it really uh, uh, and eventually dad said, Okay, I can't change your desires. You're grown now. You do what you want to do. But you know, it, you realize what you're getting into, and so she got in. She go, went on had that sex change, man. You know, she's a transgender. Okay, are you with me, GP? I know some of y'all don't like this, Bobby. Why you had to bring all this this nasty stuff, man? I don't like this nasty stuff, Bobby. You talking about them transgender? They ain't real, Bobby. I don't like this stuff, Bobby. I just can't deal with it. Okay, come on, man. You want to you want to act like a uh, somebody <laughs> somebody afraid to, to deal with the truth of life? This is life, man. Whether you want to receive this or not, this is what happens when uh, things change in life. Okay, and for you guys that are old G's out there, you better get on board because life is what's happening now. And I'm bringing it to you right tight, long and short. You might not like it, buddy, but this is what's happening in your neighborhood. Your next door neighbor may be a transgender. You don't even know it, and you talk to him every day. Okay, some of you go on your job. Your supervisor may be transgender. Hmm? Your manager, huh? Some employees, you know. This is life, you know. I didn't, you know, when, when I first started him, you know who messed me over? Transgender. Uh, what's that guy? That guy, the famous sports guy, Bruce. What was name? Bruce Jenner. You remember, man? I was like, man, I did. I didn't, I, wanted, I wanted to. I wanted to read John and touch Bruce Jenner. Mm -hmm. Make this good. I wanted to reach out and touch him. I said, "What's wrong with this man?" I looked up to this man all my life. Oh, he was on the he was on the box of the weedy man. I was eating my weed. I said, "Man, I'm going to be like Bruce Jenner, man." And then he turned out to be a woman. Oh man, my world was like crushed, man. I was angry about that for a long time, man. I said, "Man, I know this man. He's been a hero to me in my life in the sports realm for years, and he's now trying to say he's a woman." What is wrong with this man? What is wrong with? The, and I was confused. I was, I was, I was some kind of way. I felt some kind of way. But you know what, man? As time went on, I learned to let people do what they want to do. I learned to accept the things that I cannot. I can't change what he. I can't change Bruce Jenner and his desire to be a woman. I can't do that, man. I can't. I have nothing to do with that. But I can change me, right? I have I can do I can I can help myself deal with it. And the way to help myself deal with it is to deal with my anger, to deal with my frustration, to deal with my pain about the situation. And I did that, man. So now I'm I'm still not all the way through it yet. You know, 
there's some things I'm still learning. Some things I still don't. I, some things I will not. I will not compromise on biblically. Okay, I'm not going to compromise on no biblical standards about transgenders. I'm not doing it. Could the Bible say this? That's the way that go. Okay, so don't don't mess with me with that. Okay, but the other stuff you got to learn to live with people, man. You know, uh, I can't I can't not say, well, I'm gonna put my head. You know, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. No, that's crazy life. I don't, I'm out. That's great crazy town, and I don't have a residence in crazy town, do you? Oh, I thought not. But look here. So we got to deal with this thing, whether you like it or not. It's gonna hit you in the face one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you old man. Sitting up the top, oh, buddy, you know, uh, I don't believe in all that stuff, man. They, them transgender man, they still a man, they're still a woman to me. Hey, they can do what they want, but I'm not gonna have nothing to do with it. And I don't want nothing to come to my house, and I don't want nothing to say to me, and they better not leave me alone. Okay, go on, go on with your craters. <laughs> go on, sit up there, do like that, see what's gonna happen to you. The world gonna leave you by your little self with your little small ideas, and you're gonna be like me, crazy in the head, trying to figure out why Bruce Jenner changed your woman. It doesn't matter. Okay, why he changed to a woman. It's already done. Accept it and deal with it from that point forward. Now, like me, I don't compromise the biblical standards. Okay, now I, I just don't change uh, biblically on nothing. If the Bible says wrong, it's wrong. Okay, so if the Bible says right, it's right. So I deal with the biblical standards and I accept the biblical standards for what it is. I don't change. I don't, there's no compromise on the biblical standards when it comes to sex, man and a woman. Okay, a man's supposed to be a man. Okay. That's what the Bible says. And a woman's supposed to be that, that, I didn't hear no in between, no transgender. I didn't see that. Okay. I didn't see that. Okay. So I don't compromise on that. But I do have to live in this world with these people. Okay. And so when I live in this world with these people, I have to live in peace. Okay. I'm not gonna cuss them out. I'm not gonna slap them up. I'm not gonna try to rub. I accept them for a person, a human being, a member of the human species. Okay. And I suggest you consider doing the same. Okay, let's go. All right. Number two is what? Number two, what we on? Number two, number two. Number two, DD said number two. Yeah, well, I don't do it. She get it. Yeah, yeah. All right, number two. So we go focus. Wow. So that's her, man. And a little boy, that's cute. Cute little boy, you know? Got the big Philippine lips. Cute little boy. Philippine nose, Philippine eyes, Philippine hair. And that's her on the right there, guys. With the hat on, grown up. And that's her dad. Daddy had to get, daddy had to get on board with this thing, you know? You know? All of your life, you raise up the son. See, the, she had on the tux as a little kid. She went to some kind of official, some wedding or something, but dressed up. But I'm gonna tell you what happened. These are some things that happened to her life in her life. Okay. Number one, she realized at an early age that she uh was feminine. She 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 in her mind, she was supposed to be a woman. You know, I don't know how I don't know how to get to that conclusion, but I just I guess it really doesn't matter to me. I have to accept what she said. Okay. And so she just went on and she got of age and she talked to it about her daddy and the daddy didn't agree with it. Da, 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 and she did it. She did the doggone thing. She had it. She had she had it downstairs cut down and then she had to have some uh, she did some reconstruction on the chest. And, and you know, she's a woman, man. Huh? According to her, in her mind, uh, in her physiology, she is a woman. And the world treats her as such. Okay? She was raised by her dad. OK, she lived in Chicago, Illinois. She's American. She's African American. She's also Filipino American. So she has mixed race. She's a mixed race child, mixed race woman. Her mom, uh, she left her mom. Her mom left her at the age of two. Okay, two years old, and she left her dad to take care of her daughter. And the mom didn't really want to give her up. She was forced to leave her. Mom was kicked out of the country, man. Yeah, huh? she was deported. And she never came back. Okay, so uh, so the lady, you think about this. She, number one, she in her mind and in her body and all her everything in her body say, "I'm a feminine. I'm a feminine. I'm supposed to be a woman. I'm supposed to be a woman." She got that going on up there. Okay. Number two, she don't have a mom, and she know her mom in the Philippines. And number three, she knows she black. She live in Chicago, South Side Chicago. You know, you know what that's that. She live in the hood, and she black. And she and she got feminine ways, so she had a rough time in life. Mm -hmm. And not, not only that, she's Filipino. Okay, she had a lot of stuff going on, a lot. 
more than uh, maybe maybe more than some of you and some and me. You know, I thought I had issues. She has some serious issues going on, and she dealt with that. And she's so far she's doing okay. Yeah, and I'm so I'm assuming, assuming that some of the issues and not all of them are still um, are eating at her a little bit. You know. Because you can never get rid of everything. So you always have some some remnants of something in your life that you will become. It always comes back to bite you in some kind of way, form or fashion, if you have not completely dealt with it. Okay. So that's how that's who that's the specialness of this young lady. Okay. She's a special kind of person. And you know, not only is she a model, not only is she a dancer, not only is she an actress, famous model, famous dancer, famous actress. She won a scholarship to Chicago School of Fine Arts when she was a teenager. School scholarship. That's how talented she was. And then she finally changed over to a woman. And uh, she's a civil rights activist. She believes in not only do transgender should be treated properly, minorities as well. Okay, She's big on civil rights. And she finally located her mom, long lost mom. Her mom is from General Santos in Mindanao. It's General Santos City, and she finally located her mom. They reunited, and she goes out to see her mom once a year faithfully. Uh, she hadn't seen her mom ever. First time she found her on the internet, hmm? and that's where a lot of people are finding their parents. You know, on the internet, they just thank goodness that the internet does have some good benefits. Not a lot of crazy stuff on the internet. You got to be careful on that. Not a bad stuff, but the uh, the good stuff. I think I think that the good stuff outweighs the bad, okay? So the internet, internet helped her to find her mom in Mindanao. So they, she goes out there every year and she started learning Tagalog and uh, she started learning some wine, all, all kinds of stuff she's learning. Now. So she's very happy, she's adjusted and she's representing not only the African-American community, but she's re representing the Filipino American community as well. She is a lot of things going on in her life but she's making the most of it and she's doing the best she can do. Okay. So uh, that's it, man. She, um, that's her right there. Number three was what? Oh, number three. Oh, y'all. No, I forgot, man. What number three? Huh? What I tell you was in the room? I'm going to give you a hint. What I tell you was in the room? Elephant, man. We're going to look at that elephant right now. Okay. Y'all with me, JP? We got a big old fat elephant sitting up in here and we're going to address that elephant. We're going to say, look here, Mr. Elephant. No, uh, we're gonna put some clothes on you because we're gonna dress you. <laughs> and we're gonna, I ain't talking about dress the elephant. We're going to address why the elements in the room. Okay, here we go. Number three. All right, so that's the elephant right there, man. That's it right there on the right. That's Lena, Lena Bloom. That's B L O O M again, guys. My bad, my bad. I made it error typo. It should be B L O O M. Bloom, Bloom. She's blooming. She's having a blooming time of her life right now. And uh, that's the elephant, man. Now, what is the elephant? Number one, that she's a transgender. And I, I took out a lot of that stuff already. I addressed some of the things for the elephant, you know, because it's staring us right in the face. We can't ignore the fact that she's she's a, a, a person that was a, born a man, a male. She was born a male into this world. And she made it uh, a transgender. She made a transition to a female life. You know? And so the question is, ladies and gentlemen, are transgenders real women? Hmm? Are they really women or are they just men trying to be women? You know, that's the thing we need to look at. Yeah, you know, because one of the things that make the transgenders uh, so unique is that they have lived in what? Both worlds. You know, I can't imagine what it would be for me to live uh, all my life as a grown man. And then one day I say, uh, you know what? I'm supposed to be a woman. <laughs> I don't like being a man, and I gotta go get me a sex change. That be, be like what? Everybody in my family disown me, man. <laughs> They're like, he crazy. I don't want to be nothing. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I can hear my, I can hear my sister right now. What's wrong with him? I'm, I'm gonna pray. <laughs> but that's what she went through, man. I mean, all her life she was a woman. She was a boy. Okay, and then she turned out. She just recognized it. In her mind and in her spirit and in her heart and emotionally, she knew she in her that's what her she's saying, she knew she was supposed to be a woman. And so she made that change. And it's happening over and over and over and over. 
When you do I fill out an application, you don't say male, are you male or female? They'll say that, but then they'll have that little session. Now you're a transgender, and there's a couple of other categories I can't recall right now, but there's more than just one, it's more than just two, it's not binary anymore. It's not A or B, male or female. It's a lot, it's about three or four other categories, gender, gender categories that are on the application current today's application. If you haven't filled out an application in a while, guess what? Get ready, get ready, because it's on there. When I was growing up, you know, they had, <laughs> they had one word, they had one word on the application, S-E-S, it would say sex. And then you know what I would put? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, it's sex. Yes. <laughs> I'm just playing, just playing. But no, they would have sex, and then you put uh, M or F. You know, they have a little certain M or F. But now they'll put sex, and they'll put M, T, F, whatever or lgbt all kind of stuff man you know that is what's happening and you cannot get away from that man i mean you can like i said you can put your head in the sand and dug it i don't want no part of that word about this i know you can be old folk if you want to but the world gonna pass you by and eventually one day uh, a transgender might have to save your life when you in the hospital messed up with covid huh come on now Let's move on beyond our fears because this only difference between you and a transgender is they had some physical changes to their body, physicality. They didn't change their mind. I mean, the, 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 the mental is still there. The personality is still there. So that person is still there. They just had a physical change. And that's how I, how I have become to uh, rationalize this thing for me. Uh, and that's somehow, you know, James, I told you, Brother James Brown, so you got to deal with it. Uh, whew, that's how I'm dealing with it. Yeah, but again, when it comes to the biblical standards, I don't mess with that. God said, let there be a man. He created a man. And I told you all the other day, he took a rib about the man. A spare, he took a spare rib. <laughs> you remember I told you, women, that's why women like spare ribs so much, because they ain't nothing but spare they was a, They were made from a spare rib. God pulled a rib out of a man and said, that's a war man. You come from out of a man. Called woe, saying for out in the Hebrew, woe man, out of man. Yeah, and so women are spare up. That's it, male, female. And I didn't see nothing but in between. But you know, uh, we have to deal with the world we live in, and that's what's happening. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to show you, man, this is what's going on in the world today, and you have to deal with it as best you can. So, are transgenders real women? That's for you to decide. Uh, I know my opinion on it because I told you how I stand on the Bible. Okay, and I don't believe that transgenders should be treated. They should be treated equally as a woman. Okay. Now they uh, legally they could be treated as a woman. You know they call them miss this, miss that. But if they say, let's say they had a competition, it's a female competition, and you have uh, women competing, and then you have men competing, and then you are transgender and you want to compete with the women. That's unfair because you're stronger, more than likely than the women are, and you you have your 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 physical attributes are different. I think there should be a th just like this a several categories to put uh, to put out on the application for your sex and gender. There should be categories for putting them into play a uh, basketball. It should be a gender gender league, yeah, you know, a transgender league, yeah, you know, stuff like that. I don't you know. It's got to be some differences, okay? Because there are differences. Differences, and the problem I have is a lot of us try to make it like it's no difference. It is a difference, okay? You cannot get away from that. And if you, the people that say, well, there ain't no difference, let's treat them. Say, no, you're just looking at, you look, you're not looking at reality. It's wrong for two women to, to have a competition and one of us transgender and one of never had any transsexual change at all. That one, that's an unequal competition. It's unfair because uh, that woman that had the trans transsexual change has a man's uh, musk, muscle, mass, muscular body, mass. You know, body mass is stronger, it's bigger, and they, more than likely, those women that are transgenders that are treat, uh, competing with regular women usually will win that competition. I've seen it. So I'm telling you, it's unfair. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not saying disrespect transgenders at all. No. They have, like I just showed you, this lady right here, she was a boy. She went through a whole lot of stuff during her life. Okay. She went through a whole lot of stuff. And she's doing well. She's coped with a lot of her stuff and she's made a change. She's made a transition in July. You should respect the fact that she had a hard time in life and she's doing well. I respect that part of it. Okay. And I respect, I call her, I call her. I don't, I'm not going to disrespect her and call her or him. Yeah. You, know? you got to be respectful to people and deal with them uh, respectfully. 
Because why would you, if she, if, let's say she call you out your name, would that be right? No. Nah. So deal with people the way you would want to be treated. You would want to be treated with respect, right? So be respectful to those persons, whether you like what they did or not. Some of the things they did, I don't like that stuff. You know, I told you I can't budge on the biblical grounds, right? When Bible comes to be, I don't like it, you know, but I got to deal with it. I got to still got to respect them, and then you should as well. Let's go. All right, last one. Um, so we talked about are they are transgenders uh, uh, real or, or real women? We looked at, and said, so how should they be treated? I just told you. You treat them with respect, man. You know, you got to agree with everything they say or everything they do. You don't have to agree with the sex change they have, but you have to respect them. You know, I told you about my experience with Bruce Jenner, man. Bruce Jenner was one of my favorite heroes. O.J. Simpson too, you know, back in the day, you know. And but to this day, man, I I have I still have an issue with Bruce. I'm so, I, most of the stuff I've gotten through, man. But when I see him on TV looking like a woman, I still like I just want to turn away. I turn it quickly because I you know I get flashback, man. Hey, that stuff I had in anger about me come out with him, you know. And when I look at O.J., man, I still I got mad respect for O.J. Okay, not. Not in life or as a human being, as an individual, because I think he's a murderer. Yeah, I, I know how to separate things. He's a murderer in real life, but back in the day, in the day, in the day, he 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 could he could, he could catch that ball, man. He could kick that rock and he could run with that rock. I got that's the respect I got for OJ. And I don't think that this is what you know OJ now. You know he he uh, he he killed the cold and all that, and he, he got free, right? So you have to let that go. He's done with that, okay? And you have to respect that as well. But I still, I can't deal with him on that because I believe he was guilty, you know? So anyway, but I, the, the football side of him, much, much, much mad respect. You can't take that away from him. All right, so um, I just wanted to show you that, man. You know, uh, biblical analysis, you know? Uh, the Bible say that, you don't say nothing about no checks change in the Bible. I'm sorry. Y'all don't get mad when we all you want. But I don't, I don't, you know, if you can show me something in the Bible said a man can change to a woman and the Lord approve it, I'm, I make my, I'll make some change. <laughs> I'll be like, okay. <laughs> but if you can't show me that man, or they, if you see something in the Bible that the, the woman can change to a man and the Lord approve it, I'm going to say, okay, I, I, I didn't see that. You know, I, you show me that man, I might make some changes in the way I think, you know. But I, until that day, I'm gonna have to strong, stand strong on biblical biblical ground, biblical analysis. That that you know, the man for to be a man, a uh, woman for to be a woman. But you got to deal with people the way they are, you know. And so the last one I got down here is WWJD. Okay, WW baby, you know what I mean, right? WWJD, huh? Okay, I man, I got to tell him. I got to tell him everything. I ain't, I got to tell you everything. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, WWJD. Means what would Jesus do? Yeah, the Most High, Jesus, man, the Lord. What would He do? You know, how would He deal with these people that have made a transition from one uh, gender to the next? How, how, when they changed their bodies. They said, well, "You know, Lord, I, I was made a man, but now I want to be a woman." Or, oh, Lord, I was made a woman. Now I'm asking the Lord, can you change me to? A man, <laughs> you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And you know, um, the Lord is just looking like, hmm? that's what I believe. I believe, like, hmm? and people are taking matters in their own hands. Okay. And whenever you take matters in your own hands, and you say, and I, God has nothing to do with that. Are you with me, GP? I know I'm a, I may be offending some of you out there, but this is how I feel. <laughs> it don't make it right, it don't make it wrong, it just makes it how I feel. Feel, okay, so and I'm okay with it, man. That's me. I'm okay with that. And and if you're okay with it, cool, cool. And if you're not okay with it, that's cool too. You know, I'm not trying to judge you. I'm not trying to come against you and your beliefs. You're thinking, but I'm just trying to share what I see. You know, this is life in the Philippines. A black person, what viewpoint? <laughs> this is my viewpoint. It may be right. It may be long. Maybe wrong, maybe strong, I don't know, I don't know, but this is how I'm dealing with it, okay? And you got your own way of dealing with it. So, and I'm, the worst way you can deal with these types of situations, ladies and gentlemen, is to ignore it, is to run from it, is to turn away from it like it doesn't, you have to face things 
and deal with them. Like James Brown said, you got to deal with it. Uh, you can deal with it a bad way, you can deal with it the right way, or tight way, or long way. Or the wrong way is to fight them, is to come against them, just to verbally abuse them or physically abuse transgenders or any type of LGBT. It is wrong because they are number one human beings. They are members of the physical, the human species. You have no business attacking verbally or physically anyone. Not, I don't care who it is. Okay? So, well, if you disagree with some issues, that's okay. But just don't take it out in any abusive way, whether it's violent or uh, verbal. If you don't do that, it's wrong. Okay. All right. That's all I got to say, man. But yeah, I, I, I just wanted to bring that to you. Uh, uh, um, she is an, an awesome person. I read about her and. Uh, She's very nice. She's got a lovely personality, a beautiful woman, uh, a beautiful young lady. And uh, she has earned, uh, done a lot of things that a lot of us have not even, even thought about doing. You know? And so uh, we, I wanted to bring that to you. She's a Phil M, Philippine American. She found her mom in, uh, in San General Santos. And uh, she is doing well in her life. Uh, Lena Bloom, B-L-O-O-M, Lena, L-E-Y-N-A, Bloom. And you'll hear more about Lena. She's only 27 years old. She's a Filipino American. She's got a long way to go in life. And I keep telling you, you cannot run from things that's happening in life. Things change all the time. All the time. Nothing, there's nothing certain in this world except change. Change is always going to happen. So it's not about what changes, it's how you what deal with the changes. Okay? You don't want to run. I don't want to, uh, uh, she's no, you don't want to do that. You stand your ground and you greet and you meet and you treat them as best you can without trying to be antagonistic, uh, trying to be uh, an animosity, bring any animosity in the situation. Say, hey, how, how are you, ma'am? With a smile. Treat them with respect, even though you may not agree with everything. I don't agree. think I agree with everything. No, just told you my issues. But I'm not going to disrespect nobody intentionally. And I would suggest you do the same. And if you do that, you're going to be all right. You don't have to go home with them. They don't have to go home with you. But why you have to deal? You may have to deal with some on your job. What are you doing? What are you going to do? Cuss them out and then get sent to HR? Huh? You're going to slap them and get sent to HR? Fired off your job for some crazy thing you could you could have dealt with on your own? I don't want to work with her. She, 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 she one of them gay girls. She, she gay boy. I, I, I can't do that. Nah, I can't. Come on, man, stop acting stupid. I don't, I work with a lot of gay people in my life. Yeah. And, and I you know, I, I, I respect them as a, just another work, co-worker. Okay. They have different ways. And I, I, you know, I'm not with that. But you know, I have to respect them as a co-worker. And then you have to do the same. You live in this world. Okay. That's all I'm saying, man. You don't have to agree with everybody on everything they do, but you have to agree to be uh um, respectful to each other and what you do and how you treat them and how to behave towards you. So that's all I got for you. I want to read that to you and let you know that we have Lena Bloom. She is a uh, made history for the Filipino Americans and the African Americans. She is a uh, transgender female uh, swimsuit calendar for Sports Illustrated. And it's an awesome time, man. It is an awesome time. She's doing a lot of things that many of us have never even dreamt on, on doing. And she's coming from a disadvantaged background. Okay. And she's, she, you know, I just I just listed the things she you know she had going on. And she rose up. Above all that stuff, she rose up. You know, why did she rise up? Because she focused. No hocus pocus. Just focus, focus. You know, people call her all kind of names, little boy teaser, you know, all kind of stuff. She rose up and she focused her mind on what she wanted in life and she obtained them. What's your problem? You don't have no transgender tendency. You didn't make no check sex change. Why you can't get what you want in life? Why you can't move up? Hmm? You still blaming your mama? Yeah, that's one reason you still blame. You know, my bill, I didn't raise me, but you know, and I had no home training. And, you know, I, I did it, did it. And you know, mama can't do everything for you. You act a fool on your own. And you didn't learn what you're supposed to learn. And now you're paying the price for that. You're burning. You don't learn, you burn. 
That's why you ain't got no good job right now, because you couldn't pay attention in school. You're always cutting up. And then when your mama tried to straighten you up, you cussed her out too. Don't tell me. I know the, I, hey, I know what you're doing out there. I know because I've been there and done that too. And I've seen a lot, and I counsel, counsel a lot of people that been through some change. So she, I, got, I got respect for Leona. She went through some stuff, but she rose up. I went through some stuff, but I rose up above the mediocre stuff. You got to focus, man. We all got pain. We all got trials. We have a situation, man. What you going to do? Let the situation keep you under a rock and bury you? I'm not. Nah, I'm better than that. And you are too. But you got to recognize that inside of you is all that matters. All that's around you don't mean nothing. You know, because all that stuff is changing. It's changing. But you're, you're the same person and you got to deal with the changes around you. And don't let the changes take you under, bury you in a hole. So I look up to this lady, not because of all the stuff she did and all of the fans and the stuff, you know, something, but she rose up, okay? She wanted it bad. How bad do you want it, rise up? Hmm? How bad do you want it? She wanted it bad enough to focus all the negativity out and the positivity in. And she made up her mind that she's going to make a change in her life. She did that thing. Okay. All right. That's all I got, man. Let's go. Let's go. We're getting ready to get up out of here. People get ready. Whether the train is coming, don't think no ticket. Ah, it just get down, boy, or need it, love. Woo. Say it again. Say sweet, please, love. Don't need, don't need no ticket. Ah. You just get on board, get on board. <laughs> Are you ready, man? Y'all ready? Y'all ready to ride a little train, man? Are you ready, man? I'm ready to ride a little train, Bob. Y'all been waiting all that last night, man. You know, I'm just trained. I know you did, man. It's okay. Hey, we didn't have a lot of people that, but it's all right, man. I don't, you know what, man? I don't care if it's one, two, three. I don't care. I'm going to do my thing, Yeah. I'm gonna do my thing, and that's all I can do. I can't, I can't make people do this. I can't make people do this. I just got to be consistent about what I do, okay? And then I'm, I stay in my lane, okay? That's what I do. I stay in my lane, and I'm like, put me in my lane, man. You can't touch me because I'm focused. Like Bruce Lee said, be laser focused. I'm laser focused, man. I don't worry about what you do. Because, you know, you do your thing, I'm going to do mine. And that's what I'm worried about, my thing. You know, now you sick or whatever, I'm concerned about you. You know, I'm going to pray for you. But I stay in my lane, man. And I suggest you do the same thing. Mind your business. <laughs> I remember people on my job, they buy me use it, buy me use it. Hey, look here, let me tell you something. You ask me what? I love you, let me tell you something. Mind your business. <laughs> And I shut them up. They ain't asked me another dog on word. They should mind. Because that's what you tell them. People like to get in your business, man. Mind your business. Stay in your lane and get out of mine. Oh, trying to get in my Kool-Aid. Don't worry about the flavor of my Kool-Aid. Worry about yours. You know, that's how I used to get people off my face. Don't want to know about my business. But look at We got to find out who's rubbing up, talking about Buffalo. I'm going to be the first man in there. He's a, I need to look. I got some. I want the intelligent mind. Inquire mind. Wants to know. Who that is? Who that said he gonna be them? I need to know. I got. I wanna know. Don't you wanna know? Don't you wanna know? Uh, that's a song I remember back in the church. Don't you wanna know? No, I ain't that. But now, let's see. We got. I got right who's rubbing above them. Who read it? Let's see that that is the number one haunch or haunch in this house. Who that is? I got to know. One, two, three. Who is it gonna be? Yeah, Leroy in the house, Leroy in the house, Leroy, Leroy, Leroy in the house. What's up, Leroy? H? How you doing, brother? He managed to be number one, man. Leroy, congrats, man. Hats off to you, brother. You did the thing right, tight, long and strong. You went playing today. He said, Bobby D, I ain't been number one in a long time, man. I got Congrats, Leroy. <laughs> he did at least did. He made it, man. Leroy, I'm so happy for you, man. Glad to see you on the show, man. You were not playing. Congrats. And uh, he did the thing right, tight, long, strong, and he made it. He made it on the show, and he's number one hot show. Good, good to see you, man. 
Uh, but yeah, it's so good to see, you, man. Uh, he did it right, tight, long, strong, and uh, you did something that anybody, everybody else under you couldn't do. They couldn't be number one. You can only have one number one, and you are the number one honcho today. You are the person that says, I want to be the leader of the pack. I want to be in the front and not in the back in that rhyme. Are you with me, GP? Uh, so y'all give me props today. Leroy is the number one time show. And uh, you got to know that one is a lonely number. And he's all by himself. Don't want to be. So good to see you, Leroy. Let's go. Right turn, everybody. Who we got? Big John. Big John in the house. Big John. Big John. Big John in the house. Woo. What's up, JT? JT is out today. He's looking good, looking strong and long, right and tight. What's up, JT? How you doing, brother? He said, "Good morning, Bobby Dean. Hey, good morning to you. Good, good, good evening. Good evening to you, John. John is out there in New York City, and everything is running, striding, right and tight, long, long. Everything's nice out there now because it's uh, springtime. The weather's getting a little warmer and warmer. Summertime is hot in the city." In New York City, New York City, and just like by, like Chicago, man, when the summertime comes, it's hot as I don't know what, all get up. And then when the wintertime, ooh, man, like you're in Alaska. You know? There's no, no in-between. It's either hot, 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 or cold, cold, cold. And you better be ready in, the, in the New York City. I don't know if you're uh, original. Uh, were you born in New York, John? Because I wasn't born in New York. I, I went there a few times, but um, I, went, I pretty much stayed in Harlem, Queens. Uh, Long Island and the Bronx and Brooklyn. I've been in those areas, but um, I, I was never born there. But I was—I know most of the people that are born in New York are a little bit different. They're streetwise people. Um, they uh, you, you talk to them, man. You better be ready because they're bad. They're like you—you you saying how you doing? They and I got your wallet and go. <laughs> You better be ready when you walk down the streets of New York City. Good to see you, John. Riding a train by the lady. Oh, John, guess what, man? You know, you see, you got <laughs> I something. You <clears throat> I forget nothing. You know, me, I'm like that elephant. Y'all saw that elephant? Elephant, elephant, don't forget nothing. I'm out of elephant mind. I don't forget nothing. Come on, Lady. Yeah. What I okay? What did I forget? Lady? Number two, just want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she told me that, John. I didn't say that, John. Lady said that. Let's go, Riding train by the lady. What? <laughs> One day, you know, the what's up, Terry? Terry, Terry, Rain Man in the house. Rain Man, Rain Man, Rain Man in the house. Woo. What's up, Rain Man? How you doing out there, Dominican Republic? You all right, man? Little women messing with you? <laughs> you get a, you know, you got them women running out there. You got to beat them all with a stick. Get back, get back. <laughs> Terry Fleming, he's why I give it to Terry Fleming. He's very disciplined, man. Uh, he, one thing about Terry, man. He got a good mind on him, okay? He knows what he wants in life, okay? And he's not going to get off track. And he went to a place where it's easy to get off track because you got a lot of fire mama jammers out there and everything that's supposed to be poked out on them is poked out. Everything that's supposed to be stuck in on them is stuck in, you know? And, and so that catches a man's attention, you know? When everything, that stuff poking out like that, you're like, boom. <laughs> So I know you're looking so, but it's hard to resist the temptations when you're in a city and you're a country that they coming at you. I know he's been approached. I bet you he's been up there a few days. So I know somebody said, hey, sir. He said, hi, ma'am, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Please, please leave me alone. <laughs> landlord, don't mess with Murphy. <laughs> huh? What? Landlady, I mean, the landlady. Where, where he stayed. Where, where Terry stayed? Mm -hmm. uh, he's in a hotel. He's in a hotel. So he's like, you know, in a hotel, you got, if you don't, you don't uh, okay. you mind your business. You're separate. You got probably five minutes to, you know, they, whenever these women know you by yourself, they come at you like Barracuda. <laughs> barracuda, like, wah, 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 wah. And, then, and then not only he, he got Terry, then he got, he got Terry, got two things going. Number one, he's a male. Okay. And number two, he's American. Okay. And number three, he got Monty. <laughs> Put those three things together, and he's like a chick man. <laughs> Everybody running at the material. I know you all right, man. I know you ain't gonna, you're not going to uh, succumb to the temptations of the fast woman out there. He goes, no, yeah, I'm not like that. I just tell them like this. When they come at you, say, sir, and this is what they're going to tell you. They're going to say, hi, sir. Say, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, sir, uh, my name is Jezebel. 
Jezebel. <laughs> Easy. Your name is what? My, my name is Jezebel. What's your name? My name is Terry. Oh, hi, Terry. And when did you get here, Terry? Uh, I've been in about four days now. I'm in, I'm in the Marriott Hotel right there, you know, just trying to get me some sun in the, in the pool area. And I, I need a little swim, and I'm doing all right. You okay, man? He said, yeah. I said, do you live out here, man? No, I don't live here, but I come here every day. Okay, you come here every day? Okay. Okay, you have work there? No, I don't work here. What do you do? I'm just a girl that likes to have fun. And you know what that means, right? Girl, just want to have fun. And then they go say, Terry? You just me. Do you want to have some fun today with me? <laughs> you know what that means, right? Don't do it, man. Don't. I don't care what they tell you. You're going to feel like doing it, but don't do it. Because they're going to mess you up, okay? Stay strong, Terry. Let's go. Ride right, to everybody. Let's see who we got. What's up, King Arthur? How you doing, brother? He said, number four, knocking on the door. <laughs> and that rhyme. Yeah, I am it. Hey, he doing it right, Ty Long. King Arthur ain't playing, man. Remember, King Arthur was gone. He was absent. He was Mia. A. He was Mia. Lady, Lady, I said he was Mia. Mia? Yeah. Huh? He was Mia for a long time. You know what Mia means, right? Missy. Missing in action. Ah, Mia. Yeah. I heard <laughs> he was Mia. Missing, he was missing in action for a long time. But he's back. Yeah. He's back in the game. You know, and you, in order for you to be in it. I think he ran out of Tuba. That's why he's, he's appearing. Lady D said she <laughs> think you ran out of Tuba, Terry. That's why you're back. You're trying to get her to get you the more Tuba. <laughs> okay, Terry. Put that on the list. Lisa. When we go out tomorrow, we're going to ship Terry. I mean, uh, uh, King Arthur. A, a gallon or two. Okay, put okay. that on. Can you put that on the list, baby? No, on his way to okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, King Arthur. King Arthur. And make sure, you, make sure you uh, stay consistent, and you might get that too. Okay, man. So good to see you. He said, "Uh, number two, number four, and uh, what? Knocking, knocking on the door. Hey, man, you done knocked on the door. You know, I remember the time, man. I remember Bum Phillips, right, right, man. He said, he said last year, you know, Bum Phillips. You remember Bum Phillips? He was the uh coach of the the he's called the Houston Rockets. Bum, B U M, his first name, last name Phillips. Bum Phillips, old coach, white guy. He said, uh, You know, last year, last year uh, guys, uh, no, year before last, guy, we knocked on the door. Last year, we, we, we knocked on a little bit harder. And this year, guy, we're going to kick that son of a bum in. <laughs> he said, We're going to kick that son of a bum in. You know? Hey, we're going to be all right, man. We're going to get you some tuba, and you won't have to kick that son of a bum in. Okay, let's go, right there. Bobby Lee, he's one nation. Who we got? King Arthur. Misspelling words like me, Bobby S. Bobby D. <laughs> hey man, I never, I don't know what's wrong. I used to be, you know what, man? I used to be a good speller, you know? But when I know, you know, what happened when, when you get older, things, you start getting slipping, you start slipping and losing stuff. Now I know how to spell bloom, but I just overlooked that. And that happens as you get older, you, you spell it. My handwriting, as you had, have you noticed your handwriting, guys? If you're over 45, 50, notice, have you noticed your handwriting changes? My handwriting changed, and I can't change it back. I've been trying in my, I've been trying. Lisa, Lisa, you are terrible. Every time, you, <laughs> I don't write no more. I said, Lisa, can you write that for me? Because <laughs> whenever time I write something now, it look like chicken grass. I can read it. <laughs> no. 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 I can read it, but she carries me. Give me that pen. <laughs> I just let her write. I don't know what it is. I, you know, I guess it's just when you get old, you just scribble, scribble, because you know what it's supposed to be. But you know, and you can. Your age, my dear. Okay, whatever, nice. whatever. But I can, I mean, I can read it myself. But when I said, <laughs> read that, Lisa, she can't read, huh? Because that is your handwritten. No. Of course, you my can't hand read. was, my, yeah, but my hand was writing was better than that, Lisa D. I told you, my hand, I, had, I used to be, I used to be good with cursive. I can still print very well. But the cursive, oh man, you know, you, I, you know it's like those, uh, you know, the doctor, they write the prescription and you can't read that stuff. That's <laughs> all right now. I don't know what it is. Let's go, ride train, body, Lizzie, one nation. Who we got? Murphy, hey, what's, what's up? up got in the house, got in the house. Yeah. Woo, what's yeah. up, got it? How you doing, man? He said, hello, Bobby, and Lizzie. What's up, man? You all right, man? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Oh, we got the hair done in the house, man. If you got in here, something ain't right. Let's go, right? Tell everybody who we got. King Arthur. Arthur, what's up, King? How you doing today? He said, uh, Leroy. Uh, the what? The point man. The point man. Yeah, you were the point man, man. You know what a point man is, right? You got in the military, you know what a point man is. And uh, you got to be on your game to be a point man. Hmm? You got, because you're the leader of the pack, baby. 
Everybody looking at you to bring them through in that ride. Yeah, they counting on you to make it through and to make it do what it do. So if they and you what happens if point man is the guy that comes out in front, got his weapon in his hand, and everybody has the platoon in the back of it. When you do like this, you mean stop. Everybody stop because he sees something crazy and then he's gonna keep on walking just to make sure there ain't no enemy. You know? And then when you ready, he said, okay, everything's clear. He said, let me let's go. Okay, and the point man takes the hit. So sometimes when he keep on walking, he get one of these, and he takes him out. So you gotta be strong, man. You gotta have a, a strong mind, a strong attitude, a strong conviction that you can take it, you can lead these guys, and you're not afraid. Point man cannot be afraid, because when you're afraid, you're gonna worry. So you think some, oh, I heard some crackle, I'm going on. <laughs> Get out of there, man. So point man has to have strength. And when a man is devoted and designated as a point man, the, the platoon sergeant or, or command CEO, they choose the strongest, wisest, careful, smartest person in the group, okay, to be the point man. And and when, he, when that's an honor when you're chosen to be a point man, okay, it's not a, it's nothing to look down on. Yeah, hey, I'm the point man today. All right, man, give me his props, you know, because he's doing it. Let's go, Ride Train Bobby. Who we got? Marfa, hey, this is a. He said, hello, Love Train, Blue Ranchers. Oh, the Blue Ranchers say. <laughs> hoorah. <laughs> Woo, got to go. All the Blue Ranchers in the house say, hoorah. All my engine in the house say, hooray. Let's go. Hit that like button, y'all. Can y'all hit the like button for me, please? One time, one, two, three. Change your pie out, one, two, three. Change your pie out, one, two, three. Change your pie out, one, two, three. Please, please, hit, please that like hit the button. like button. Please, please, hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, please. We can't do nothing else. Hit the like button, man. Please. Riding the love train with Gravy D and Lisa D, one nation and their crew. Who we got? King Arthur. What's up, King? You late, Murphy. <laughs> Murphy, <laughs> he was like 18, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he was done like six or something. Murphy, you all right, man? You all right, King Arthur, he's too late. He not riding the caboose today. King Arthur saying that because he was number four. He number three. Number four. Number four. So he all right. He, that's why he can talk, talk that talk. Let's go. <laughs> Murphy, he said, off my game lately, King. Yeah, Arthur. King. I let Murphy, Murphy, but one time he murdered was on the caboose. Murphy slipping, Murphy. You what are you drinking lately? <laughs> I did you, Murphy. Look here, man. I did you to get you some carrot juice, put some turmeric in it, and mix it with some turmeric and ginger, and get you some moringa, which is uh, in my lung guy, and some get put put some mangosteen in there too, and get that first thing in them and some lemon juice. Mix it up with some purified water and get that first thing in the morning when you get up. And man, you'd be like on fire. <laughs> you have so much energy, man, you could you be not be able to go to sleep. It's hard to find a powder in your country, I think. Mm, they go to the health store. They get they have it in it's just after order. They might you go to the health store and find everything I said. They might not have it on, on the shelf. But they can order it for you. Okay, let's go. Ride train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Who we got? King Arthur. Better late than never, Marty. Tell you, man. As long as he got on the train, that's all it takes. Riding the left train with Bobby T and Lisa D. Marfa Hayes. He said, "I'm late, but I'm still great." In that right. Let's go. Ride train, Bobby Lizzie. Who we got? One Nation on the boot. King Arthur. Yeah, Marfi, I may be old, but I'm not cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm never cold. You don't see me up here cold. I'm He's hot. Cold. <laughs> I'm always hot like snot, brother. Get that right. Let's go, Ride Train Bobby Lee. He won't let you know that. Who, who we got? Terry Fleming, like her slappers. Slappers. <laughs> Lisa D, you slipping too? Can you read? Can you like read for you? Like her slappers, that thing. Like her slappers. <laughs> Liker slackers tap that thing. Liker slackers tap that thing. Liker Liker slackers tap that thing. One, two, three. Chichapaya. One, two, three. Chichapaya. One, two, three. Hit that like button. Chichapaya. Let's go. Round train, Bobby D. Lee. one nation, another. Who, what the, who we got? Murphy Head. Murphy Head in the house today. He said, well, we are, we all know God is not the author of confusion. That is exactly correct. There's nothing confusing about the word of God. Everything is clear as a bell, okay? And people that make it confusing 
are not of God, because God ain't with that. He makes it plain, he makes it simple, and he makes it where we can get it and understand it, okay? So whatever doesn't line up with God's word, something ain't right, okay? Let's go, round train, Bobby and Lizzie, One Nation, who we got? King Arthur. What's up, King? He said, hello, Terry, what's up, man? You all right, good to see, good to see, good to see you. Who we got, Ron train, Bobby and Lizzie, One Nation, under who? Murphy Hayes. If you call, you die. <laughs> Just because you're old don't mean you cold. <laughs> you could be old, man, but you still could be young in your mind. The body might be a little old, right? Hmm? You know, body go down a little bit here and there. Look at body. His body gone. <laughs> Almost. You know, he's still living. He's still in the land of living. He's still kicking. But he's an old man. He's an older gentleman. And there's nothing wrong with that. But his mind is sharp as a tack. You try to debate him on anything, he will probably he will probably win the debate because he's strong in mind. His body's weakening, and you know he fell he fell on, on going up the steps to the plane uh, a few times, and uh, we that that just solidifies the fact that he's older. You know, older people have a tendency sometimes to lose their balance more quick, quickly quicker than other people, younger people, and it's okay, man. You know, we, you know he's older. There's nothing wrong with that. And then people are trying to say, well, you know, Biden, he just hiding the fact that he got some kind of ailment. And nah, 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 nah. no, he ain't hiding nothing. The doctor would have told him. Now, if that was Trump, you remember Trump had all that kind of stuff. And he put, <laughs> Trump made the doctor put down there that he was healthier than a 39-year-old man. Oh, God, crazy stuff down there. And he made him put it down there. And he, the, doctor that, the doctor that did that, he should have been taken off the board because Trump had all kind of sickness. He had a, cholesterol and something else anyway. And that's why when he got that COVID, he was almost taken out. They had to get him out of there quick, man, and get him filled that medicine. Let's go, Ryan Train Bobby, who we got? King Arthur. Yes, Martin, but we are living in a ball of confusion. Yeah, we're living in a world of confusion. World of confusion. You know what I saw? Da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 ball of confusion. Oh, but that's I'm a oh the what a temptation. I forgot. Anyway, yeah man it, it, Everything around us is like squirreling. Faster than we can think. The world is changing, ever changing and rearranging. Don't go changing, rearranging. Don't change the color of your hair. Now, girl, I just want you. Someone to talk to. I love you just the way you are. And that's why I have issues sometimes when I see people changing their gender and rearranging their sexual orientation. It's a problem sometimes, you know? And, but I've learned to deal with it and I've learned to adjust to it. I don't, there's some things I don't, I don't uh, agree with, but I don't cuss them out. And I don't say, you better go away from me. Get away, get away. I don't do that. That's not courteous. That's not polite. That's not respectful. You have to respect people, even though they have a difference. That's just like black and white. You know, that's like when we were brought to this country, they had no respect for us. Why? Because we are different from them. Okay. And that's why they treated us like dirt. So what are we going to do? Turn around and treat transgenders like dirt? Gay people like dirt because they're different from us? Come on, man. We got to be smarter than that. We got to be better, than, even though we don't agree with some things. Still got to respect people. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lisa. Who we got? Joshua Moore. What's up, Joshua? Joshua Moore in the house. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. He said, "What it is, big brother? What it is, big brother? I'm riding in the love train. You know where I'm going to paradise with a Filipina. I'm riding." The no. love train until the conductor say we need a new motor, no more. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna ride until they can't ride no more. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. The love train is the place to be when you want peace, power, health, strength, prosperity, wealth, love. Everything you need is right on this train. You come to the right place, baby. Bye -bye. Let's go, ride train, probably you need to see what nice you. Who we got? King Arthur. Oh What's yeah, up, you can definitely still can't cut the mustard. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. You got to be on your game, man. You could be 80 years old, 90 years old. Your body may be a little bit tired, but you still can make it do what it do. Ain't that right? Let's go. 
Right, I'll tell you about Lily who we got. More face. Oh, yeah. That's because the God. She can't read today, y'all. She Little. said that's because the God. Uh, huh? Little of this world. Like okay, like I can't. So big that up. Big that up. Big it up. Okay. He, he said that's because the God, little, a little G of this world. Go back down. Lock it. Huh? Lock it. Lock that. Huh? I don't understand. Okay. L A C. Lack. Oh, God, the little G of this word. Lack it. Yeah. The little G. You talk about the the God, God less with the little G. The little God is the God that's not the real God. It's the, the world's God. He likes it. He likes it like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, the people that serve the little God, they like the things of the world. Yeah. You know? And that's just the way it is. So uh, we who serve the big G, the big God. It's a difference, and we're not, we're not, uh, we're, you know, remember that scripture? It said that we are in the world, right? We in it, we, we're all in this world together. But those that serve the God with the big G are not what? Of the world, okay? That's how I can say it to you, man. That's the best way I can say it. Let's go, ride train, Bobby Lee, who we got? Martha Hayes, you sure more, thumbs up. Thumbs up to you, brother. Good to see you, man. That's sure more hanging in there, man. He used to be, off one day, off two days, back there, but you hanging in there strong. Who we got? Get an angel. Hanging in the house, hanging in the house, angel, angel, hanging in the house. Who be dead up this day? What's up at the Emmy? Miss Emmy Arsavia, she said, Good morning, everyone. Hello, love Trey. Two, two. Two, two. Right back at you, Emmy. Good to see you, my dear. So good to see you. She's out there in uh, Abu Dhabi. She's out there at Abu Dhabi, and she's having the time of her life. She's working for a great family. Uh, she helps them with their household and with their children. And she uh, also sends money home to her family here in the Philippines. She's been there for a long time. She's adjusted to the life there, but she still remains to be a for the Filipina. She'll always be a Filipina because she got that in her blood. Once a Filipina, always a Filipina. And they can take the Filipina out of the country, but they can't take the country out of the Philippines. So she's bringing Philippines to Abu Dhabi. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, who we got? I like she's working 14 years in the same employer. For 14 years? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. That is a long time. So if she's been there 14 years, guys, there's something that's keeping her there. And that's probably the good pay and the good environment. And then she's made some good relationship with the people she works for. And that's a good thing. Let's go. Round train, Bobby, and easy one nation. Joshua Moore, she, uh, he said she was a good looking man. And now it's woman. He changed, but that is really cool. I would never hit that but. Hit that, but she's nice. She ain't gonna be able to get pregnant. He can't have foster kids or not at all. Right, they, I don't. I don't think they made it technology where they can get pregnant. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I don't want to see that child. <laughs> if they made it where they can get pregnant, man, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that child. You know what I mean? Ooh. But no, um, yeah, she. Uh, they'll never be able to. But they're having children. I mean, not physically. But what, what they're doing is they're adopting. You know. They're adopting. Um, a lot of gay people adopt. I mean, I seen uh, the day on TV. There's two guys. They were, they got married. You know, marriage is legal in the United States. Uh, they got married and they adopted. You know, they got a little son and they're gonna raise a son. You know, and, and it's okay, man. I mean, what can they do? You know, what can they? What can they do? They can change and be gay like them now. I don't think they're that cruel. They'll let them become deciders what he wants to do for himself, and that's the way to do. And they're gonna be good parents. Who's to say they're not gonna be good parents? You know. Who would say that? Because people are people. You raise children the right way. As long as they raise them the right way, they're good parents. So, you know, we can't condemn them for that. Um, I applaud them for that because they're being civic minded. There's so many children in this world that would uh, do anything to get a loving parent, whether they're gay or straight or transgender or whatever. Children deserve to have a loving, caring parent, and it's okay. Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, who we got? Martha Hayes, woman for Kate, man internally steal men, sorry, when of their beer. Women for Kate, men internally steal men, sorry, when he stand before God, he will be a man in trouble. Okay. Um, 
I think he's trying. I'm not sure what you're trying to say, but I think he's trying to say if a woman changed to a man, um, there she's still still a man. That's what he's saying. I, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm, not, but I, I'm trying to interpret what he's saying. But when he stand before God, he'll still be a man in trouble. Okay. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that question. I can't say yay or I can't say no. <laughs> I, I, I'm not God. I can't. I don't know, man. I just hope that the God, I think, you know what I think? I think, Murphy, I think God's going to judge us by our actions and our deeds in this life and how well we uh, adhered or tried to adhere to the word of God. That's what he's going to judge us on. And uh, if we haven't done that properly, then we know what the result will be. If we've done that according to, we've done as much as we can according to word, then we know we're going to go one way and people that haven't going to go another. That's why I look up. That's what I'm looking at. We'll see. Ryan, Trey, Bobby, Lee, who we got? King Arthur, Bobby D, I honestly think that people were born that way in the opposite body. Okay. A lot of people do. You know what? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That is that is something that is uh, in, the psych in the field of psychology. That is a very prominent theory that many people are born uh, mixed up that when let's say God made some of us, God uh, put a little bit too much femininity in a, in, but he put it in a man's frame and God put a little bit too much uh, masculinity and he put it in a woman's frame and they just realize, hmm, I'm supposed to be a woman. They feel like that. You know, uh, that, that's just, that's a theory that goes around. And, you know, I don't know. You know, I think that, I think partly, partially that could be true because I've actually worked with a lot of gay people have much respect for them. It's like anybody else, they're human beings. I don't discriminate against them. I don't talk down to them. I treat them fairly, just like they treat me. Most of them, the most of the, the majority of gay people that I've met and I've worked with are the most friendliest people you would ever want to be around. With. And the only difference from me and them and you is their sexual preference. That's it. That's it. You know? So when I understand it like that, I understand it like that. I could agree with you to a certain extent, uh, 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 King King um, you know, Reggie, that King it could Arthur. King Arthur that it could be that way. Yeah, you know? let's go. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, Z, One Nation. Who we got? Anthony Lee. What's up, Anthony? How you doing, brother? He said, "Oh no, it's Decepticon, <laughs> male, female, or Decepticon. Once a man, always a man." In my book, hey man, hey man, hey, somebody, some of us like that, man. If you a man, you know what? That's what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say, man woman or in between you know got you got to go with what the bible is saying biblically and i told you i don't compromise on what the biblical standards are so even though i know what the biblical standards are i still got to deal with these people and i can't i can't uh, say well you ain't no man you a woman and i'm gonna always treat because if i was working with that person they'll have me up in hr office <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be fired the next day you know what i'm saying so you got to deal with people and you have to treat them with respect we can have our own personal ideas we can have our own personal beliefs. We got when we dealing with these people out in the street, on in the world, and on these job. You better keep that stuff to yourself. I'm telling you, man. They uh, gay people can get you fired. Transgenders can get you fired. Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to be speak bad about them, but I'm telling you, you're violating their rights or their right to being treated fairly on a job. When you call them certain things and you call them out their name, just like if I was an African American working on a job and somebody called me the N word, I'm gonna take them down to I'm gonna take them to the HR, and if HR don't do nothing, I'm going to the EEOC because it's unfair to me to be on a job to be treated like that. And same way with them, you gotta be careful, guys. Let's go, ride train, Bobby D. Lee, One Nation. Under who? Who we got? Big John Thomas in the house. In the house. You can't read. Lisa D, please. Bobby D, in the Olympics, transgenders will compete with women either this summer in Tokyo or by 2024. I don't support it, but the Olympic Committee does. Okay. Uh, I don't support, I don't think that uh, transgenders, if you're a man and you're a transgender to a male and you're competing with um, uh, uh, other, let's say, let's say you're a woman and you're transgender to a male and you're competing with other women in, in the Olympics, I think it's unfair. Actually, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. Could be right. I don't know. It's just my opinion. Opinions are not wrong, or they're not right either. It could not be. They don't have to be right. They don't have to be wrong. But this is just my what opinion. My opinion is that it's unfair to have a transgender compete with the opposite sex. Okay, it's it's unfair because when I I like I stated earlier, their their body frame 
it's different. They're going to be a little bit stronger if they were they transgender to a man and they're competing with women. Uh, women. If they transgender from a uh, man to a woman, right? And they're competing now with other natural born females. That's wrong, in my opinion, because that person still has the body of a man, even though there were adjustments made to his body as far as the uh, the boobs and all that stuff like that. It's made him to make him look a little bit more softer and a little bit more feminine. And it's okay, but it's not okay when you put that uh, transgender person with females now because the females cannot compete with the strength. Um, I saw a fight, uh, it, uh, it's on the internet, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a transgender. He was he was a male, and he had everything changed to female. So he was, he was in a fight, a, a professional boxing fight, and he was competing with a female that was not a transgendered female. And guess what he did? He mauled that woman, almost busted her head off. Mm -hmm. I mean, serious, because he got monster, and he was jumping up <laughs> like he did something. You got twice as much strength with that woman. You. It's not, it's, in my opinion, man, it is totally unfair. And I wish the Olympic Committee would rethink their, their uh, ideology on that. Let's go. Round train by Lisi, One Nation. Marfa, hey, she said, I'm not going to be blind because confusion has become the norm. It's a man no matter what. Okay. We all have a right to our opinion. And you have a right to yours, I have a right to mine. But don't let your opinion go out there and hurt somebody's feelings. Or get disrespect somebody, especially on somebody's job, because you won't have a job long. I'm telling you, man, we can talk like that among us, okay? I understand, you see, I got you, man. But keep that kind of stuff. Be careful when you're out and about. If you go in the store and you know that's a transgender, and you say, you ain't, you ain't no, you ain't no woman. You ain't nothing but a man. You ain't no nothing. They're gonna get you out of that stuff. <laughs> Let's go, right? You gotta be careful with that. Let's go. Arthur, he said, I totally agree, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, you know, man is a man, a woman is a woman, but you got to be careful how you deal with people. You don't want to go in there and uh, disrespect them because when you disrespect, that's just like somebody calling you the N-word. You're not going to feel good about that, are you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't let nobody, I'm not going to let nobody get away with calling me the N-word unless you got a gun in your hand. <laughs> Let's go ride to anybody with these easy one nation. Lamont, he, he, uh, he came from Facebook. He said, good morning. Good morning to you, Lamont. You all right, man? So good to see you. So good to see you. So, 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 so good to see you. Uh, 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 we always like to see people that we don't normally see, and we like to see people come from Facebook. We caught our connection back to Facebook again. I'm trying to get some other things. I'm still waiting on our LinkedIn. I checked on the people that said, we're still processing your application, sir. I said, <laughs> get to it, and let's do it. Let's go. Round train by me. Who we got? I respect his right as a human, but that's it. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's all you can do. I mean, you, you have to respect them as a human being, and you cannot disrespect them. And when you do disrespect people as human beings, you wind up paying the price for it, and we don't want to do that. Because it, the truth be told, we all want to be treated as at least human beings we are, man. And that's the least we can do to anybody, except if somebody mess with me. <laughs> no, but yeah, we got to treat people right, man. That's it. And then, uh, Anything else other than that, if y'all at this try to uh, be, uh, get you to come on with them, you go on with them, now. Nah, we don't do it. We don't cross that line. Nah. We gotta, let's go, right here, everybody. Who we got? Just show them more. I would stay as a man who's kind of big. There ain't no woman who can't even get pregnant. Boy, cut them titles off. Wash your, wash your make off your face. And make up your okay. face and get a fresh cut because he can't. He not no woman. <laughs> see now, see, just sure they will fire you. <laughs> you go on your job talking to them like that. Just show them more. Report to the office, please. Just show them more. Report to the office, please, right away. When you get to the office, did I hear you say? Did you say something to Jennifer that used to be called James? Yeah, I said. You okay? Stop going, going and clean your locker out, sir. You <laughs> fine. <laughs> we can talk that stuff here, man, but don't do that on your job, Joshua. Don't do that, man, and don't even do it behind a person. back. But you know what? They happen. Your friend, if you think your friend, go back and say, you know what he said about you. And next thing you know, they call Joshua Moore. Report to the office, please. Don't do that, man. Let's go, Ron. Who we got? Hey, Ron. 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 Hey, 
King Arthur, amen. Amen, amen, whether he is from China, America, Philippines, or Spain. Spain. Yeah, a man's a man's a man's a man. Uh, what happens, though, is that men can change their gender, okay? A man can change to a female by having his sex change, cut off his downstairs and put something on the top and then make him make his face look more feminine. Then he becomes a trans transgender person or a woman. They call a woman. They are women. Uh, legally, they are have they can change their name and legally they're they, they become uh, from uh, Jennifer to to James, you know, and so uh, things like that can happen. And then you have to understand legally they are now legalized woman. They're not no longer a legalized man, a man, but they are legalized woman. But they're still physically when they were born into this world, they were born as a man. We understand that. And then you have, there's a dichotomy. There's a, just, uh, the reality of what they are now. And uh, there is the legality of what they are now. And those two things don't match up. So that's what uh, people of this generation are, are easily able to deal with it. People from generations like mine and, you know, you're like, man, what? Like I told you, I got, I got, I had a complex about Bruce Jenner. You know, I'm dealing with it better now. I, I understand it now. I got it, man. You know, some parts of me still getting it, but I got it now. Yeah. And, uh, and that, once I got that, man, I'm, I'm good. We can, you know, I know what I know what's going on biblically, and I know what's going on right now in reality. And what's going on biblically, and what's going on in reality do not match up. Okay, there's a there's a there's a there's a divergence, and there's a difference, and you it's hard to match that difference up, and you cannot. Okay, so I don't try to deal with. It. I just let that side go, and I have to treat people right. Yeah. You know? But when it comes to the Bible, I can't compromise. Let's go, Ron Trey Bible. Who we got? Martha Hayes, God will forgive if he repents. If he repents. Oh, yeah. You know, it God, 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 we, we serve a forgiving God. That's the way he is. And, you know, you got to keep on remembering. I told you when I did that last, when I did finish the presentation on a point number three, I told you the last one I said was WWJD. What would Jesus do? You think? Do you think? Do you actually think Jesus would look down on these people? Hmm? Do you think he would say, "Get away from me, you dog, you dirty, low down, stinking, rotten dog"? Why did you do such a thing? Do you think he would do that, or you think he would say, "Come here, my son. I know you did this, and I don't approve of it, but I'm still going to love you enough to see you through." Okay? Which Which one do you think? Huh? That's for you to answer. Let's go, Ryan Train Bobby Lee. Who we got? Martha Hayes. I think it's a smart gadget that's why that's making us illiterate, Bobby. Smart gadget, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I agree with that one, man. We got so many things out here. We got calculators, we got our phone. Remember you used to had to do uh addition and subtraction and multiplication and all that stuff in your head and by your hand. And see, that didn't really, I'm, if I had to do some additional stuff by my hand now, I'd be in some serious trouble. <laughs> I don't forgot. I don't forgot, man. I get a calculator and do my my uh, arithmetic. I don't, I don't, you know, and it, it's so many things like that. Before we got the cell phone, we would write. We had remember the little black books. All the guys had a little black book with all your lady numbers and her stuff, and you had a little stuff. And right by her name, you had the letter H. Rhonda is H. You know what H for, right? Hot. <laughs> Hot to try. <laughs> and all you had to, and you had a little black book. You got a little black book, everything in your, your calculator and your, and your phone, smartphone. You know, and you didn't have to remember the number. Remember, you have to remember people's number. Oh, you ain't got to do that. That's, it's causing our intelligence to fade. And uh, we are coming more, we are becoming more self, uh, uh, non self reliant and more gadget. Reliant on the things of this world, and you know that's that's what man wants, man. You know why? Because the more gadgets, the more money. You know, money in their pockets. That's big business, man. Look at the computer. You talking to me on some of you talking to me on a smartphone. Some of you talking to me on a tablet. Some of you got a uh, computer, a desktop, laptop. That's money you paid, and you by you paying that money, you're saying I want you to dummy my life down. 
<laughs> yeah, I want you to dummy my life down because I'm I'm tired of using my gray matter. I don't want to think. I don't want to think anymore. I just want to escape from thinking, and I want to be a dummy. No, <laughs> no, but but I agree with your sentiment, man. Uh, what happens a lot of times? Gadgets will have a tendency to make us reliant on them, and once we you take our gadget, you take if you take my cell phone away from me. I'm gonna have some trouble. <laughs> not not here in the Philippines because I don't use that much in the Philippines. But if I was in the USA and I go a day with my without, if I lost my cell phone, oh man, I'd be up the wall <laughs> and I'd be down to to uh, Best Buy trying to buy me another one quick, you know, right quick because we've become so reliant on gadgets nowadays. To uh, and it's all money motivated, you know, and that's the way the world is going right now. Everything is away from the person. And on to objects, and, and uh, the person is no longer the person. The person is an object now, you know. And that's the way the world's going to. And I don't know if it's if it's going to ever reverse back. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lee. See who we got? Uh, Robert Chow. What's up, Robert? How you doing, brother? Good to see. You. He's a roll cell, roll call checking, roll call checking in, Bobby. Hey, good to see, you, Robert. I'm glad you checked in, on us, man. Always had good to see you, Ryan Train with Bobby D. Lee. D. One Nation under group. Good to see you, Robert. He said, I'm checking in, Robert. Bro, call. <laughs> Good to see you, Robert. All right, let's go. Who we got? Ryan Chain, Bobby Lee, C. One Nation under group. Who we got? Uh, Burbank said, I can barely write in cursive anymore. <laughs> Either, uh, I tell you, Lisa D. Uh, Lisa do. Uh, Lisa do. <laughs> Lisa D. I can barely talk to. Lisa D. writes all of most of my important things in cursive. Now, I can print. I can still can print. I can charm. Man. I'm good with print. But, and then spelling, oh, man, I, just, I can't remember. Sometimes I know I know a word, but it won't come, you know, until I read it. And you know what I do, man? Just like I told y'all, we rely on gadgets, I Google the spelling. <laughs> how you spell this? And sometimes I'll ask Lisa D, I say, D, how you spell this? And she's, I don't know, look it up. I just Google it, you know? We, that's how we are, man. I don't know what it is. Ryan Chain, Bobby Lee, One Nation, who we got? Uh, Robert Lee. What's up, Robert? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. He said, uh, we need Bobby Lee's D. Hope all is well and good. All is doing fine, man. We all right in tight, long and strong. Good. Glad that we see you. Now that we see you, we're doing even much better. Good to see you, Robert Lee in the house today. In the house. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee's D. One Nation under group. Who we got? Burberry Hayes. What's up, Gunny? He said he may have fallen, but he did it with grace. And poise. Yeah, yeah. We all we all fall sometimes. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. Yeah, we fall down, man. Ain't none of us perfect, you know. But the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we fall down. You know, I will fall down, man. And, and I want somebody to help me get up. <laughs> I'm falling and I can't get up. And I want somebody to help me. But you know what, man? Sometimes when you fall down, ain't nobody around to help you up. When Jesus fell down, who was around? All the disciples was gone. You know, nobody helped him up. One person, I think the guy named uh, Barabbas, I forgot him. Anyway. And when one person, all the people he done inspired and he done led, led and, and fed, and nobody around to help him up when he need. So sometimes, man, we fall down, but you got to help yourself get back up. Okay. And, and that means you got to have some willpower, you got to have some strength. You got to have some hope, some drive, and determination that you're going to make it. And you don't need nobody but the Lord on your side. Let's go, right? <laughs> Let's go, right? Trey Bobby needs the Robert Lee. He said, uh, late to the love train, riding in Kaboot. Hey, man, that's all right, Robert. As long as you're here, man, we love to see you get on the train, get on the way any way you can. Just get here when you can. Get here when you can. Let's go. Ryan train, Bobby Lee. See who we got. Who in this house with me today? Robert Lee. He said, uh, Bobby and Lisa D, in my opinion, God Almighty through Jesus cross, the Christ doesn't, God Almighty through Jesus Christ doesn't make mistakes. I get it. We are born male or female. Some don't like the way they are gendered. That's true. That's what's happening today. Many of us uh, decided uh, that we have, we, we are in our hearts and in our mind and our feelings and our emotions that we are mostly female. And some women decide in their hearts and their minds and their feelings and their emotions that they are mostly male. And then they take it upon themselves to make that change. They don't even pray about it. They say, now nah, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah, I'm going to do this thing. 
and they do it. You know? And so who am I to, to say that they're wrong, they're right, but when it comes to the Bible, all I can say is I don't see nothing about making no change like that in the Bible. Okay? I don't see it. And if somebody can show me, I mean, I would, I certainly would appreciate it, but I just, I just don't see it. And so, if it's not in the Bible, we cannot agree with that biblically. Okay, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me real good now. Okay, because there's a distinction here. If it is not biblically sound, I can't agree with that on a biblical basis. Uh, I want you to make that, make sure you got that. Biblically, I can't agree with that. Okay, but when we live in this, when I told you that we are in the world. But we are, as a Christian, we are not what? Of the world, okay? So as a Christian, because we are in the world, I have to understand where you made that change and I have to recognize your change because I'm in this world with you. I don't biblically agree with it, right? But I have to deal with you, like the great, great God brother James Brown said, deal with it, uh, who? Because we in the world again. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lee who we got? Uh, we got Robert Lee. He said, uh, agree with you, Bobby Mill, competing against nature, born females is wrong. It's dead wrong. I mean, I just, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be right, you know. And I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody. Let me just make this disclaimer. Let me just make this statement. It is not my desire or it is not my intent to offend any male or any female that has made the transgender journey. Okay, that is my, not my desire. I told you from the beginning of this show that I understand why people do some things and that's their decision. Okay, I agree with, I have to treat you with respect and, and I want you to treat me with respect. And that's where we live in this world together. Uh, but on biblical grounds, there's some things I cannot, I cannot compromise on. So I'm sorry if I offended anybody, it is not my intent. But I have to say what I believe and what is my opinion. And I think many of you agree with me and I agree with many of you. So we're not trying to come against each other. We're just trying to come to what? An understanding because we have to understand things that happen in this world and try to live with it as we go through this life. Let's go. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, who we got? Mervyn, hey, he said, but that theory is confusing God. Don't build hybrid. God knew what he was doing when he created. You're right. We should not disrespect anyone, but we should just tell them the truth. And look, um, and you know what, man? We can we can tell them the truth and love anyone we want, but we're going to get cussed out, beat down, everything, else, and then we're going to get fired on top of that. So you got to be careful with that. And I'm not trying not telling the truth and love. I'm not saying that at all. But you can't, you can't, you, if you're on your job with somebody that's transgender and you're going to tell them something like that, be, be ready for the repercussions because they're going to take you straight up to HR. That's for you to go tell somebody, well, you know, you're wrong for that. And you're on a job with it, you're wrong for changing from a man to a woman. You're wrong for that. And you do one of these, pointing the finger, guess what? They're going to have, <laughs> you know what? First of all, they probably cuss you out. And second of all, they probably bust you on side of <laughs> And then third of all, you be up in HR trying to figure, tell them people why you told them that stuff. And then next thing you know, fourth of all, you be packing, going out the door. Let's go around, train about who we got. Terry Fleming, he said, just woke up. Hey, man, you went to sleep, man. Terry, what's wrong with you? You all right, man? Oh, I forgot. Terry's out there in Punta Gorda, man. He had a good time. You know, he just waking up. He can do what he want to do, man. He, he riding high. He riding high. What, I don't know what time. What time is it out there, Terry? It is approximately uh, 12.05 in the afternoon here. So it's probably what? Uh, in, in the 12, 12 something in the midnight there? I don't know. Round train, Bobby who we got? Terry Fleming. He said, I'm not so, uh, I'm on. I'm not on vacation, but I'm sleep anyway, uh, sleep away camp. I'm at sleep away camp. Okay. He having a good time sleeping, enjoying himself. He calls a sleep away camp. Well, we know he's on a vacation, man. He went out of this. He had to get out of the United States of a dog on America. He said, I had enough of this. <laughs> he said, I had, I had enough of the United States of a dog. I want some freedom. I want some freedom. And he found out where he could go to the Dominican Republic because they want them United States dollar so he can make some of them women holler. I know what you're doing. Let me, I'm playing with you, man. Let me go. Uh, we got long man. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Long time no see, man. You all right, man? So good to say it, so good to say it, so good to say it. He said, a mismatch between perceived gender and physical gender 
used to be called gender dysphoria by a psychiatrist. In other words, the discrepancy was considered to be a delusion. Um, that that may have been at one point in time, but if you check with the APA, with the American uh, Psychological Psychi Psychological Association, they now say that is is no longer it's no longer a dysphoria. It is it is a real uh, concern. It is real, and they used to consider it a disease. Yeah, they really did consider. Uh, they used to consider uh, homosexuals as having a disease way back in the day, but it's no longer considered that. Uh, but uh, I again, you know, I brought this topic up not to condemn anyone. Uh, that's not my job. I don't judge people and I'm not trying to judge people. That's the uh, job of the most high God and Jesus, okay? So who died and made me God? Nobody, because I'm not trying to take that claim. I'm not trying to claim it. I'm not I'm not God. I'm not, and I'm just me. And I'm sharing what I believe to be uh, not right, not wrong, but my opinion. All of us have an opinion. It may be right, turn out to be right, it may turn out to be wrong, but it is our what? It is just our what? Opinion. Okay. Let's go. Ride train, Bobby Lee. See who we got. Uh, Terry Fleming. What's up, Terry? He said, when a person changes their gender, that will confuse and take choice away from the other person. True. Um, we all have a choice in anything we do in life. We, you know, my mama said, you can wear shoes. My mama told me long time. She said, Bobby, I said, yes, ma'am. She said, look here, boy, I done told you what to do. You can wear shoes. Now you can wear shoes or you can go barefoot. Choose which one you want to do. And same thing with them. You about your agenda, you do what you're doing over there. It's about your agenda, uh, whether it's your choice. You want to wear shoes or you want to barefoot. You want to be a man, be a man. You want to be a woman, be a woman. But realize that there's consequences for every choice and action you take and that realize that there's a reaction to every action you take when you understand that and then you still make that choice things that come after that are on you you have to live with that choice you made bruce jenner if you're listening to me you have to live with that decision you made to become a transgendered woman all of the lives all the people that trusted in you, Bruce, now are confused to some degree. I looked up to you to be a hero in the in the in the, in the Olympics. All my life, I'm the man. I was seeing your face on the, the Wheaties by I me. Mean, I thought you was a man. I looked up to you to be the epitome of a masculine man. You know, hey man, Bruce Jenner, man, yeah. yeah. He turned out like that. You know, I, I, I look. I say I, I struggled with it for a long time. Got better, but it's still some lingering remnants of that uh, bad feeling. Ride train, Bob D. Lee. Who we got? Mervyn. He said, "I'm by, I'm just giving my opinion. I don't disrespect people because they are humans and not. But that's right, man. We're all humans. We got issues. I got issues. Man. You not? Y'all love me. <laughs> y'all ain't trying to hide nothing. You know. Y'all know me. I got some issues, man." Straight up, and y'all know it, you know? And I know y'all too. Y'all got some issues too. You try to hide from me. I know you, man. You can't play that game with me. You got issues. Y'all got issues just like I got. We all got issues. Ain't nobody perfect under this sun except the most I got. Let's go. Ride train, Bobby D. Who we got? No, man. He said, now, the fact is to conclude that nature made a mistake and that the patient is right. We and the medical profession may change this conclusion and Again, someday. Um, yep, that, that might be growing fair. You know, some people might look at it like that, like uh, nature made a mistake. And when they say nature, they're excluding the most high God. The God don't make no mistake, you know? So, I mean, look at this. You were born a man. I know a lot of guys that have feminine uh, ways, okay? But does that mean that God made a mistake just because they got feminine ways? No. That means they're still a man. You're just a man with more feminine ways than more masculine ways. That does not rescind your ability to be a man. That does not take your manhood away from you. You know, you know, you know I think we've all met men that seem a little bit on the feminine side, but they dress like men, they walk like a man, they talk like a man, but you might notice some, some things they do, like some men do little one of these, you ever seen a man, one of your buddies, a friend you hang out with or at work, and they do one of these? 
you know, that's a little feminine thing that women do. They, I don't know what it is about that holding the hand. But well, some women do that, and then you find somebody. Some men do that. I, I don't do that, man. <laughs> but you know, that's women do. You know, that's just one of the things I'm trying to say. That some men have more femininity in them. Than, than, than most men. But that does not mean they're not a man. That does not mean that they weren't supposed to be a man. And I think that a lot of people uh, run to the conclusion when they see that they have more feminine ways or more than most men. They say, well, I'm I was supposed to be a woman. And, and I just don't know. And they get confused. Let's go. Round train, Bobby Lee, One Nation. All right, that's it. Let me see. Oh, we got some more. Uh, we got round train. Murphy Hayes said, uh, Lisa D and Bobby Lee. Hello, uh, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael Coffey. I said, Murphy. <laughs> Michael, uh, Michael Coffey, he said, he's in Bobby. Uh, hello, my own boot, I'm going to be because the guy's in the boot. Hey, man, we doing good, Nurse Mike. Nurse Mike, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Ryan Chain, Bobby Lee, one nation. Who we got? Michael Coffey, he's about to be hot. President Biden wants most of us, most USA citizens, to be vaccinated by July 4th, 2021. Yeah, um, that's the goal. Um, I think it's. I think it can be reached. I think it'll be reached. We're pushing the vaccine out at a very, very fast pace. Uh, Biden, President Biden, has met and exceeded his 100 million doses within our first 100 days. He's already exceeded that. So I think the the, the, the distribution of the vaccine by the Biden presidency has been amazing and um, they're, they're going to do a good job. And, and so many people are saying, well, Biden didn't do it though. Trump did and Trump, Trump didn't do it. Trump, the only thing Trump did was that he helped to push the scientists to work faster on coming up with a vaccine because it was a very, very urgent need. And any human being would have done that knowing that uh, without a vaccine, we would be in deep, deep dirt, more aware, worse than what we are now. So uh, that's what he did. But when it came to get the vaccine distributed, Trump team dropped the ball and Biden team uh, picked it up. And so uh, we got to give credit where credit is due. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, see who we got? King Off, what's up, man? He said, uh, DJ D, uh, Bobby D, have you been hitting that tuba? <laughs> Lisa D. Hey, I ain't been hitting it too. Lisa D be hitting it too every day, man. You know how she do, man. You trying to hide the bottle from me. Let's go. Terry Fleming, he said, the future is technology. In the near future, we will have brain computer interface. <laughs> you know what, man? That's what they, you know, guess what? You believe this, man. But that's what they're saying about the vaccine. There's people saying if you take that vaccine, they're going to put a chip in you. <laughs> and that's like the mark of the beast, man. The 666. He said, you take that vaccine, they're going to know everything you do, and they're going to control you. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> That's what they say going on right now, Terry. I'm telling you. There's so many rumors and uh, misinformation and disinformation about the vaccine. It is incredible. Let's go. Ron Train, Bobby Lee, see, Murphy, hey, or Mur I keep saying Murphy. Michael Coffey, he said, Bobby Lee, hi. Here in Cali, USA doing about 2 million vaccinations a month for COVID-19. That's awesome. And, um, I think that's a great, that's a great, uh, that's, that's good. Um, now, uh, the problem is why, if they're doing that kind of vaccinations each month, what's the, what are, why are they calling for Governor Newsom to be recalled, to be uh, kicked out of office? I don't understand that. I thought he was doing a good job. Is, am I missing something? Is he doing something that I don't know about? Because from what I have read about him, everything he was doing was trying to limit the, the spreading of the virus there. And, 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 you know, most of the things he's done has worked. You know, so I don't know. I keep hearing they want him out of the office. I don't know what he's doing. Ryan Train, Bobby D. Michael Coffey. He said, Bobby D. Hello. Some of us uh, call nurses uh, giving, some of us Cali nurses are giving, uh, are giving out the COVID-19 vaccines at Dodger Blue Stadium. Okay. So uh, the stadium, you can go to the stadium and it's, it's an open place and people are welcome. Uh, that's a uh, known place where everybody can get to. So that's a good thing. Uh, and hopefully, uh, many of the uh, other cities will do stuff like that as well. Michael Coffey, he said, Bobby D, hello, Angel Stadium, LA Forum in Inglewood, Cali. It's appointment only. Okay. All right. Good information about Cali. You got to come out, you going to Cali, you're in Cali. He's giving me some good information about the buyer vaccine, how to get it. Terry Fleming, Ron Trey, Bobby D, he one nice. He man has never been perfect, and even God has made mistakes. Remember, he 
He, he tried to destroy his design twice. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, but he had heart and he forgave. And that's what makes us different from other species. Most species, many species, or other species than us, they don't have a heart. They don't have a conscience. And then you need a heart to forgive. He forgave us. And then we have to practice. We have to be able to forgive others like the Lord forgave us when he gave us his only begotten son named Jesus. Let's go, right? <laughs> right, Trey, Bobby D. Who has got Michael Carr? He's Bobby D. High. COVID-19 cases and deaths are going down here in the USA, Cali, uh, because more people are being vaccinated. That is awesome. Awesome. Great, great news. Right, Trey, Bobby D. One Nation. Terry Blank, he said, 12.05 here. Okay, 12.05, that means that you're in, we're pretty much on the same time. You're probably 12.05 a.m., so we're 12.05. PM. So your time in uh, your time in the uh, Dominican and the DR is the same time in the USA. Central time. I mean, uh, Eastern time. Central time is like eleven something because they're like an hour behind. All right, train by the least one nation. Who we got? Crook market. The high crook market. Crook market. Crook market. What's up, crook market? How you doing, brother? Good to say you. Good to say you. Good to see ya. What's up? He said we treat them with respect because they are a human being, regardless of who or what. They want to call themselves God created man and woman. He was not confused. That's very correct. I agree. I understand my brother. God didn't create man, woman, and a transgender and the LGBTQ and all, blah, 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 all those letters in the alphabet. It was man and woman. That's all I, I mean. If somebody can find out where he treated, he, he created a, a transgender or, a, you know, something else, let me know. Cause I'd be happy to see it and, and publish it to the world, make some montage. <laughs> but no, um, you're correct. I mean, we we can call ourselves what we want, but God called us man, and other sex gender was woman. And I don't know, know nothing else from that. But you know, um, I'm not going to disrespect nobody. I'm not going to talk down to them because because they call themselves a woman. I'm not going to say you ain't nothing. You know that's wrong, man. I wouldn't call. Them, I wouldn't like them calling me the N word. You know, they call me Mr. N Word. <laughs> Hello, Mr. N Word. How you doing? Uh, look at him, man. What you say? <laughs> and we gonna have some words. You know what I'm saying? Cause I don't work for nobody. I can say what I want to say. I don't have to go on nobody's job. You know, <laughs> I gotta do that stuff. But hey, you, you go on somebody's job talking this trash. You gonna be you gonna be right in the HR office, and you gonna find yourself on the street. Be careful what you say. You know, you know what the words say. You know about it crazy. You read your Bible, you know what the words say. Okay? But you still got to treat people with respect because they're human beings. Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, Crook Bar. He said, What's in you, Bobby? Hey, man, we're doing good. Crook Bar, I'm going to say, man, you know how we doing, man. We're blessed and highly flavored and flavored up the loud. Let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie. Oh, oh, I messed up, y'all. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Uh, Murphy, hey, he said, That's why this is really. This really irks me when they change their gender. It's spitting in God's face. But I don't understand what you are. I understand what you're saying. I agree. Yeah, man. You know, it bothers me too, man. But I can't. I can't. You know, this. I don't worry about the things I can't. I can't change that. You know, and I, I just deal with the things I got control over. You know, and I. You know, when I told you about the boost gender thing in me, right? I got messed up with that, man. At the first, that was the first instance. That brought this topic or this uh, this conversation to my mind and to my experience. You know, all along I, it was under the radar for me. I never really got involved with it. But when Bruce Jenner did it, I said, Bruce Jenner, hey man, it hit me hard. So I had to start thinking about it, and I had to deal with it, like Brother James Brown said. And I, I'm all, you know, I can deal with it now. Ryan Train, Bobby, who we got? Crew, Mark. He said, What's going on, Lord Train Crew? Hey man, we're doing good, man. Y'all greet Crook Mark in the house, in the house. You know, he greeting y'all. Greet him back. Let's go, Ryan Train Bobby. Who we got? Murphy, hey. He said, what up, Crook Mark? There you go. There you go. What's up? What's up? You all right, man? Let's go. Uh, Michael Coffey, knees. He said, Bobby, hello. A lot of people here in the USA, uh, Cali here, are talking, are taking the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. For never. Yeah, I, I think that that vaccine is, in my opinion, is one of the better ones. Because and primarily because it's only what one shot, you know anything I would I would take anything that's got one shot versus two shots. You know, I, I just that's the way I feel. I don't want I, I don't want to get one stick. <laughs> I don't want to get one stick in my arm. You know, but you know I don't even want to get the one. 
but I'd rather get one than two in a day. And Johnson & Johnson has a high efficacy rate. You know, it really does. Let's go round to everybody. Uh, Royale, what's up, man? Royale, back again. So good to see you, man. So good to Hey, man, you made my day, Royale. So good to see you, man. How you doing, bro? Come on, the car. How you all right, man? So good to see you, man. So good to see you. So good to see you. Wouldn't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Just play, man. So good to see you, Royal. Good to see you back in the house again. And he's coming to us from Facebook. Yeah, let's go. Brian Train from Mo Crook Mar. He said, "Better, better than I deserve." Murphy Hey, I'm doing better than I deserve. What say you, my brother from another? My God, Brian Train, Bobby Lee, One Nation. Murphy Hey, he said, "I'm okay, bro. I'm okay. I'm right there, man. You know what I'm doing, man. I'm all right." Michael Coffin needs some crazy Bobby Lee. Hello. Uh, because it's only one shot, COVID-19 virus back then. Yes, right, man. I agree with that. Ryan Train, Bobby Lee, One Nation. Who we got? Michael Coffin. He said, Bobby Lee, hello. I have to explain to my patients when you take the second Pfizer and Moderna shots vaccine for COVID-19. What my sister uh, got her first shot. My sister Pam got her first shot. And I forgot to ask her which one it was. But she got, I think she got one more to go. And she'll be done with her. So she's doing good. Thank goodness. So. They're, they're getting their shots. My sister's in Georgia. If I was in, if I was in Georgia, still living in Georgia, I'd be right in line with her. <laughs> you watch my back. <laughs> it's on the back. Nobody back me up. You know, I'm with me. I want my shot, but you know, I'm gonna wait my turn till it come down here. I'm gonna wait till my time come. Let's go round train, Bobby Lee. We got Michael Coffey, DZ Bobby. Hi. Your second Pfizer and Moderna shots for the COVID nineteen virus is like a. A booster shot. Okay, like a, just a strengthening of the primary shot, and then uh, a few weeks later, it takes effect, and then you become uh, resistant to any virus. He just said you become a zombie. <laughs> right, Jay, my buddy, uh, Terry Fleming. He said, "Put the bottle down, Green Angel." <laughs> they hear you at the sink. He said, <laughs> Terry Fleming, she had the sink, man. I see y'all here making a noise. He said, "Put the bottle down, Green Angel." And return to your realm. <laughs> I don't know what she did. She went outside for one minute, y'all. And then she came back in and went straight to the sink. And she out there making that noise. <laughs> Roger. She said, I had to cook for nothing. All right. All right, Jane Bobby, who we got? Murphy A. He said, I have never seen or read in any Bible where God made a mistake. No, you're right. I haven't either. God don't make mistakes, man. And that's the basic Bible. There's nothing. God is perfect. Okay? He don't make no mistake. Okay? So people going around and say, well, you know, I think the Lord, he, he just put too much uh, femininity in me. And I, I, I think that I should have been uh, made a, a woman. And I want to change my gender. You know? That's how, they, that's how they go around rationalizing their actions. And God ain't buying it. Huh? I mean, or let me put like this. The word of God, it doesn't line up, okay? So there's a discrepancy from what they're saying and what the word of God says. As those of us that understand the word can see that plain as day. But if you have no knowledge of the word, you don't even know what you're doing, okay? According to the word. You're just doing your thing according to the world, W-O-R-L-D, and not according to the W-O-R-D word. So there's, just, there's a huge discrepancy there. And when people are ignorant of the word, they will do ignorant things. Okay, And, and so that's the way. That, and so I, I, I don't look down on them, people. I don't judge them all like that. I just look, man, me and you have a difference of opinion. And I'm not trying to put you down. I respect you for being a human being. I, I, I respect you, man. I hope you have respect for me and we can get along. Especially if you're on a job, that's the way you better look at it. Because you go ahead and hold in malice in your heart and, and want to. Cuss them out. You're going to be in straight up trouble, man. You cannot do that on these people's job. Okay? You got to treat these guys. If they're a woman, man, to a man, treat them with respect. You don't have to deal with them when y'all get out of work, but you got to deal with them when you're on the clock. Okay? You have you on that job to do what the people tell you to do. They ain't telling you to cuss nobody out. They ain't telling you to treat nobody back. You treat people with respect. And if you don't, you're going to wind up in HR. And you might have your job taken away. Let's go. Michael Coffey needs some He said, Bobby, uh, hello. That second Pfizer Moderna uh, shot is helping to fight the, the new COVID-19 virus variants out here. Yeah. Uh, they said, uh, it's a Johnson Johnson, Moderna, 
Uh, I don't know about fighters, but most of them are, are, are really uh, able to handle uh, most of the variants, okay? Uh, AstraZeneca was the one that was weak with the variants, so a lot of people didn't want it. Jerry Fleming, what's up, man? He said, uh, racist Republican doesn't rest when we go, uh, when when we, when Georgia Democrats, dump, well, let me go back. Racist Republican rest, does not rest when we go Democratic prison. No, racist Republican, they don't, they don't never rest. <laughs> they don't take no break, whether it be Democrat president, independent or Republican, they gonna be on their job. You know what? The problem is the Democrats are not on their job. I don't know, I don't know how many times I seen uh, Mitch McConnell act like he's still the Senate, uh, the Senate leader of the Senate. And he's not, he's the majority leader. He's not the majority, majority leader. He's the minority leader. But he's still acting like he controlled the joint. And the problem is that the Senate majority leader is now Democrat. And he acting like, well, I'd be just going to see what, see what the Republican going to do. Oh, I said, hey, look, man, you shut your mouth. <laughs> I was up there, all the leaders, look, man, you don't say nothing to me. You not, Who's in charge up here? Who's the leader? You put your turn, shut up till I get through. And we're going to vote this. They need to take leadership. The Democratic Party is not taking leadership. But Mitch McConnell was in lead, he took leadership. He controlled everything. And we sitting up there like, well, we're going to see what they're going to do. <laughs> now, take control. You know, that's my fault with the Democratic Party. They're not taking authority that they have been given. Let's go, Ryan Trey. Murphy, hey, he said, Lisa took off. To take a swig of that too. <laughs> yeah, man. She takes a swig. She went back and now she cook. She cooking some dinner. Let's go. Ryan Trey Bobby who? Jared Flynn. Uh no, it's not. It's night here. Oh, it's night there. Okay. So it's like 12 o'clock in the morning or, or what? 12 hours behind. She said you're 12 hours behind us. So you like you like midnight over there. Ryan Trey Bobby, who we got? Michael Coffee. He said, Bobby Hill. Top five states for COVID-19 cases of uh deaths of Texas. Florida, Georgia, New York, and Cali. Georgia, Georgia is my home state, man. So we're number three. Wow. Sad, man. You know why? We got a we got a Republican governor, and he act like there's no virus, you know, and he just don't care, you know. He rather for people to make their own decision about the virus, but some people ain't got sense enough to make the right decision. So you got to look at those people, man. Yeah, you know? and some people that make the wrong decision could affect other people. That's what he's not looking at, you know? I, 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 you know, he wears a mask because he's making the right decision. He go to Georgia, but he said, okay, well, I'm not gonna make it mandatory. You can wear a mask and you don't have to wear a mask. But sometimes you have to make it mandatory because people that have may have the virus and don't wear a mask can spread it to others and they affect everybody else, you know? So uh, I think, I think uh, all of the states should have a mask a mandatory law, in my opinion, until we get the virus down to a point where it's manageable, until we get the virus down to a point where most people have been vaccinated, there should be a mass mandatory, in my opinion. Michael Coffey, he's a Bobby Hill. Uh, Dr. Fossey, uh, FDA said that, CDC, FDA said, but the COVID-19 virus will be around until the summer of 2023, then it will fade out. Okay, that seems, yeah, I think it may be longer than that, man. You know, because of the fact that the variants are coming up stronger, more contagious, and more deadlier than the original COVID-19 virus, okay? So it, it could be longer than that. They just speaking out their nose, and they don't really know. They just talking, you know, talking loud. You know, they have some authority to back up what they're saying because they're experts in the field, but that they still don't get everything right. Uh, uh, and, and I respect Dr. Fossey uh, tremendously, but you know, uh, I think that's not taking into effect that, that the new variants may change the game. Because you know, uh, here in the Philippines, we had all the virus, the virus was down, way down. But now with the variants, they had to shut down the whole Manila NCR capital area in the bubble because of the variants. Yeah. So I think you know, I, some of it may be right, but you got to take into consideration the variants that. I'm making an uh, impact. Michael Carr, he's about to be, hello, guys, men, ladies, women, still make your, your uh, mask up. We, uh, yeah, all to do the basics, man. You got to do, you got to do, that. got to do it. Coffee, he said, uh, Bobby, even if you have been vaccinated, still do this, please. Not all citizens have had COVID. I know. Even if you had your vaccination, man, 
you got to do the three W's. Wash your hands, watch your distance, and wear your old mask. Okay? All right, guys, that's it, that's it right now. Um, get ready to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Do you want to do closing? Huh? Huh? You want to do the closing? Or are you done? No. All right, guys. We're not going to do a closing today. This is Bobby D. <laughs> I'm going to talk to man. <laughs> this is Bobby D. saying, take care. God bless. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, let me see. Who did anybody give today? Nah, anybody give this to you? No. Right, nobody gave me. Uh, Sorry, nobody gave. Sometimes you don't get days like that. But uh, thank you for showing up for those that you that does showed up and you didn't have to give and you wanted to give. Thank you anyway, man. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll be here for until what's the day? What's the day? Thursday, Nisi, or Friday? What's the day? I'm on the computer. The day is Thursday. We'll be here till Friday or Saturday, and then we'll take some, then we'll take a day or so off, and then we'll come back. Okay, so uh, we'll be here with you, and because that's what we do, and I hope you be here with us because that's what you should do at the end. <laughs> All right, guys, that's over now. This is Bobby D for Lisa D saying, "Take care, God bless, and peace." All right, guys, see you next time.